National Broadcasting Company presents the National Football League. Today, from Giant Stadium, it's the San Diego Chargers versus the New York Giants. Brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By STP, makers of STP oil treatment. We've got what it takes to perform. And by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. With Chargers quarterback Dan Pop pulling the trigger, the best offense in the NFL is even better this year. The Chargers attack also features a phenomenal athlete in Gary Anderson who gets into the end zone any way it takes, including this full gainer over the Miami defense a week ago. Linebacker Lawrence Taylor and defense is what's carried the Giants to two straight playoff years today. Number 56 will be hunting the quarterback again. It is a beautiful day in the Meadowlands of New Jersey, nearby to New York City. Temperatures in the 60s, clear, sunny skies. A great day for a most important interconference game. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. The San Diego Chargers come in with the most advanced offense in National Football League history. It's been described as a Star Wars attack, high-tech and indefensible. But Trump, Dan Fouts remembers very vividly a not very happy day here three years ago. Yeah, Lawrence Taylor got him on a blindside blitz and put Dan Fouts out for the remainder of the season. So he's got some bad memories in Giant Stadium. Uh, speaking of the defense, last year the Giants were second in the NFL behind the Chicago Bears, but last week were not here at all. Didn't play. The defensive line had a grand total of five tackles, just three assists and half a sack. So their punishment is today they face an offense from San Diego uh, who had 517 yards, ran 70 plays, scored 50 points, didn't turn the ball over. Giants coach Bill Parcell says there's one way to beat the Chargers, and that's to score touchdowns, a lot of them. <laughs> Coach Parcell is not at all happy, Trump, with that opening performance Monday night at Irving, Texas, when the Giants were beaten by the Cowboys by three. Don, as a matter of fact, he said he was embarrassed. Uh, Bill Parcells is the defensive coordinator of this team, calls the defensive signals, and is facing an offense today that's embarrassed a lot of people. Chargers will kick it off. Rolf Moschenko from Michigan State hits it downfield on a breezy day. It's taken by Kenny Hilliard deep. 20. And the Giants bust a good one on the opening return of the game, a 29-yard return. And the Giants come out on offense first and 10. There is Phil Sims leading the offensive unit. He was most valuable player in the last Pro Bowl. Joe Morris, after his contract hold out, played well against Dallas Monday night, but said he ran out of gas. He's not in game condition, or at least wasn't that night. Stacy Robinson starts at a wide receiver. They've got a rising star at tight end, and Mark Bavaro caught seven against the Cowboys. Opening series, first and ten Giants. Joe Morris. San Diego has changed defensively over the recent years. Their defense has been awful many seasons. This year it's more attack-oriented. Lee Williams, Chuck Ian, and rookie number one, Leslie O'Neill from Oklahoma State, the front three. Billy Ray Smith could one day be a great one. He's close. Ty Allert's a rookie. Thomas Benson and Woodrow Lowe, the other backers. Secondary, shaky at best. Phil Sims will be putting it up long before long. He thinks he can get deep on the San Diego team. We'll see. It's second down and six. Joe Morris right this time, and Morris breaks into open field. He's across the midfield spot and down to the 47-yard line. A 20-yard run from scrimmage by Joe Morris. On the San Diego offense, while leading the league five of the last six seasons, their defense has never been better than 25th. Billy Ray Smith playing just his second game at outside linebacker, blocked by Mark Bavaro, is the big difference there. Carthen, 44, also with a big tackle. Excuse me, big block. Joe Morris pops through. He is their offense, Joe Morris. The whole thing is set around Joe Morris. Not big. Had over 1,300 yards a season ago to set a career giant record for a season. Now it's first and ten. Giants moving the ball on their opening possession. Here comes Morris again. 
And this time he's knocked down on a first down carry at the 44 yard line. The Chargers defense Trump got much more confident after they shut out Dallas in a preseason game 23 nothing. And of course last week against Miami limited to the Miami Dolphins to just 45 yards rushing 54 Billy Ray Smith. Last week, co-player of the week in the NFL with 11 tackles. That time stops Joe Morris for about a three-yard game. Don Coriel, 13th year as a head coach in the NFL. Has twice been coach of the year. Bill Sims with a problem. He dumps the ball. That's intentional grounding, but apparently they're not going to call it. They ruled he was in the grass, so it's a sack. That's Lee Williams in his face. Don, I'll tell you, there is a, there's a little spot in the rules about intentional grounding that quarterbacks are aware of with a right-handed quarterback the referee stands looking to the left across the field he looks you see the official right there behind him but to his right he doesn't watch he's got to watch late hits on the quarterback so you can throw it right and get away with intentional grounding Brad Wyatt the referee there's Lee Williams in his third year from the film Cookman now the Giants go from the shotgun on this third and 18 play with no score up Long ball, coverage is there. Nicely done. The right side. Sprinting down the field was Danny Walters, formerly of Arkansas, stride for stride. Walking the dog, as they say, step for step. Lionel James was running deep, the little back who's been so effective. Now Parcells has to see his Giants give the ball up to the most advanced offense in National Football League history. They say one of the great sights in pro football is the Chargers opening drive. We'll see it in a moment. Landana hits it high, but not very deep, and a fair catch is signaled for and made by Little Train James at the 24-yard line of the Chargers. Fouts, and the Chargers are coming up when we come back. Give me a light. Bud Light. Oh, the chili. <laughs> if you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Look, give me a light. No, uh, Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Tommy, Mom said we could charge Dad's birthday present with her Ace credit card. So long as it's under five dollars. Well, the Ace Circular has our September best buys. After a two dollar rebate, this paint roller and tray set is forty four cents. Great, but. Mom does the painting. Or 30 Ace Lawn and Leaf Bags for just $2.66. But Mom does the artwork. Well, how about this Firefighter Kitchen Fire Extinguisher? It's only $3.44 after rebate. Great! Dad tries to cook. Ace is equipped with the helpful hardware man. An urgent message from the Mazda Hotline. RX-7s are included in your Mazda dealer's year-end clearance. Mazda RX-7. Trends Import Car of the Year has a fuel-injected rotary engine, state-of-the-art independent rear suspension system, and a price that makes it today's hottest sports car value. But during his year-end clearance, your Mazda dealer will make it even better. So hurry while selection is still great. See him now. Once again, let's watch from behind the Giants' offense. It's intentional grounding. You see Fred Wine on the right. He's looking through Phil Sims to the defensive line. You throw it out to the right, Don, and the referee's not looking there. He is the only man on the field who can call intentional grounding. So it goes as a charger set. Now Fox and the charger offense set to go for the first time. Right up top. Swing to Gary Anderson. An excellent defensive play by Lawrence Taylor. Fouts can make it happen fast. If he gets time, it's case closed early. They want to get up on the board and take the giant crowd out of the game if they can. But this giant defense rated number two in the entire NFL behind the Bears last year. Dan Fouts at quarterback. Anderson's a spectacular athlete, number 40. Spencer, a big back from Ohio State. Joyner in his 18th year as a wide receiver. West Chandler's the real deep threat. Offensive line must improve. The left tackle, Jim Lachey from Ohio State's a very good player. Lionel James, not big, takes on the giant defense on second down and 12 and gets ahead to the 25-yard line. It'll be third and long. George Martin, Jim Burt, and Leonard Marshall, the front three. Good players, but not a good night at Dallas Monday night. Best linebacking core in the NFL, says Ernie Zampezi, the Chargers offensive coordinator, Banks Reasons, Carson, and Taylor. 
Elvis Patterson and Perry Williams are going to see a lot of balls coming at him. Kenny Hill and Terry Connor are deep backs. will have to help out. Third and nine, San Diego. Quick Nobody out. covers him. Gary Anderson. He didn't get there, and there's also a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Quick out to Gary Anderson, who runs out of defense from all different formations. Signal against the Chargers. That's the illegal uh, motion. Illegal motion, number 40. Third down. Now, Don, what happens is the Chargers will take a chance with that. They have a lot of late motion. Try to get Anderson out in the on the flank somewhere uncovered. Against Miami last week, there were two illegal motion penalties called against Gary Anderson for the Chargers trying to do the same thing. It's just a, it's a free play. If no one goes out in coverage, that's where Fouts goes to him. Talking to Bill Parcells at yesterday's Giant practice, he feels an area four yards behind the San Diego Center is a key place. That's where Fouts sets up. And you can't get him with a wide rush. He's too quick. You've got to come up the middle. Here's Fouts on third down. Long ball. Way overthrown. West Chandler couldn't even make a leap at it. So the Giant defense and San Diego's offense out. Three downs and out for the Chargers. They have to punt the ball. As NBC's 10-minute ticker, a look at the scoreboard on this second Sunday of play. Cincinnati has gone up 7-0 on Buffalo at Cincinnati. And New Orleans, badly in need of a win after being routed opening day, leading the Packers at the Superdome. Only one, one to play. Excuse first me, one, only one aspect of the San Diego Chargers' performance last week was less than desirable. And that's Moschenko, the punter, just a 24.7-yard average on three punts last week. Moschenko hits a long spiral downfield. Mark Collins, a rookie, fumbles the ball. Problems for Collins, and down he is at the 33-yard line. A 52-yard punt by Ralph Mosienko. And just a two-yard return. He did well to do that after dropping the punt. We'll be back with the Giants' second try on offense after this. Panasonic, the future of office automation. Advanced equipment with an extraordinary concept. The easier, the better. Panasonic Genesis copiers are most sophisticated yet simplest to use ever. So easy, they automatically adjust for proper size and exposure. All you duplicate are your copies, not your efforts. Panasonic Genesis copiers, like our typewriters, computers, and peripherals. The easier, the better. Panasonic Office Automation. We know what kills your muffler. It's rust. Moisture inside your muffler can rust it from the inside out. The revolutionary Walker Advantage muffler with Absorbite bites the deadly effects of internal moisture. Look at these test results. An ordinary muffler, the Walker Advantage with Absorbite. You don't need this. Take the Advantage. It puts rust at a disadvantage. Warranted at parts and service outlets where you see this sign. Hertz announces everything must go race. Weekend race from a rock bottom 1996 a day. T-Birds price to fly just $37.90 weekdays. And low weekly rates like $99 in California. So hurry and reserve your car now. Because with all of Hertz services at these low rates, cars are going fast. Hertz, you don't just rent a car, you rent a company. An American tradition continues. 1975 brought one of the most memorable moments in World Series history. Carlton Fisk's game-winning homer sent Fenway Park into a frenzy. Next Saturday, the Red Sox road to the pennant travels through Toronto as they face the Blue Jays, plus regional action. The tradition is here. The memories are waiting. On a sunny day in the Jersey Meadowlands, the Giants set to go in the scoreless first quarter. Their second possession starting from their 34. Bill Sims, looking long, goes over the middle, and Bavaro comes down with the ball and somehow holds on after he was waffled. 13-yard gain. Gil Bird came up and put the full heat on Mark Bavaro, who is really turning into one of the best in the league at his position. Drafted in the fourth round out of Notre Dame two years ago. One of the things I like about the giant offense this year is this little half-roll thing that they, they showed last week against the Dallas Cowboys. It does only give you half of the field to throw to, but it also allows you to avoid a lot of pass rush. First and ten Giants, and they're 42. Joe Morris does well to get to the line of scrimmage. Leslie O'Neill 
Seventh player picked in the first round of the last draft. An undersized defensive end, but you can't block him. He's so quick. Out of Oklahoma State, 91, shed the block and hit Joe Morris. Chargers have a bunch of new linebackers. Billy Ray Smith last year was an inside linebacker. Ty Allard, a rookie. Benson, this is his third career start. He had one for Atlanta, one last week. And then Robinson was a, is a converted defensive lineman. So now that Charger defense and attack defense. Morris averaging almost seven yards of carries. Got 27 yards for carry. Here's an open man, Joe Morris. And he is down to the 40-yard line. So the Giants are showing the San Diego defense a lot of different looks. And that time, Joe Morris was uncovered. 15 yards downfield. When they hit him out of bounds, it's a 17-yard gain and a giant first down. Joe Morris considered by most people in the NFL a one-dimensional back, and that is carry the ball last year. 21 touchdowns, all rushing. He's a good receiver. Not big, but if you're uncovered, anybody can catch it. And he was uncovered now from an eye set the Giants go with their best penetration. Scoreless first quarter. Morris. He's going to lose about three yards. Thomas Benson, a former Oklahoma Sooner, shot the gap, made the hit on Joe Morris. One of Morris's problems, Trump, over his years in the league has been durability. He's not a big guy and kind of wears down after a lot of hits, and he's getting a lot of work early here. I would sure, certainly think that staying out the entire preseason, only having a week's worth of preseason preparation is going to make him slow to get into the game plan. And for Bill Parcells and company, Joe Morris is their game plan. I asked Parcells what he told his team after the loss. He said, just remember, it's a long season. Everybody got out the hearses last year when we were 3-3. Three and three. Giants went to the playoffs for a second straight year under Parcells. Sims all sailed on him. There is a gusting wind here at the Meadowlands. It's hard to handicap. You get down on the field, it's completely different than it is higher, and it swirls. Intended for Stacy Robinson. And right, he is throwing the ball into the wind. We got man-to-man -man coverage. Danny Walters on Stacy Robinson. You see Walters slip. This uh, San Diego Charger team is certainly not invincible. They're on a string of six straight losses on the road. The last play, Trump, Billy Ray Smith got a shot on Phil Sims, and now it's third down and just over 12. No score in the first quarter. Here comes a blitz. Up the gut they come. Sims stands in, and the ball is tipped away, then caught by the foul and lost. And the penalty marker's down in the San Diego secondary. Bavaro, excellent concentration on the football. That's a 15-yard pickup. Here's the call. Would have been a first down defensive anyway and a defensive hold, so the Giants 30, are moving on. This is their second possession with 8.41 to play in the first quarter. No score. From behind the offense, the Giants do an excellent job of picking up the blitz. There's Bavaro. Tipped once by the defensive man, Jeffrey Dale. Bavaro stays right with it. Benson, 57, finally on the tackle. A fumble. It all works just the way the coaches draw it up. Right down to the 27-yard line, where it's first down for the Giants. Lionel Manuel on the reverse. Open chain. He might go in. He's close inside the five-yard line as the Giants catch the San Diego offense going the wrong way. Reversing the ball to Lionel Manuel. Finally, Jeffrey Dale after Manuel's 25-yard run knocks him out of bounds. One of the big blocks, Bill Sims. You'll see it right at the edge of the screen, right there. Manuel with excellent speed. Giants, as you said, showing San Diego an awful lot of looks. Misdirection all the way. That's what happens when that defense... Overreacts. Manuel drops some balls Monday night against the Cowboys. Now the Giants pretty much point blank. First and goal. Joe Morris cut at the one-yard line. Wayne Davis, a second-year cornerback, number 20, saved the touchdown if but for the moment. Joe Morris's personal escort on this play, Maurice Carthon. Excellent lead blocker. You know, see Bavaro. Now watch Carton pull out here, along with 61, Chris Gottfried. 
just a great job of tackling by the San Diego Chargers. Keep him out of the end zone. Wayne Davis, not enough. Second and goal. Morris the lone setback for the Giants. As Alphon comes in motion. Stick. Jeffrey Dale from LSU. And it read all the way. The last time these two teams played was in 1983 here at Giants Stadium. And that day the Chargers won a shootout, 41-34. But they lost their quarterback, Dan Fouts, for the rest of the season when Lawrence Taylor got him. The San Diego defense doesn't have to improve much to help the offense. If they just stop them one drive a ball game, San Diego almost illegal with their offensive abilities. Big down here, like watch Bavaro, 89 to the lower portion of your screen, third and goal from the three. Now they go to Morris, and he's chopped. So San Diego's defense rises, and the Giant fans express displeasure. Now the field goal unit comes out, and a new kicker. The Giants have had a lot of those recently, comes out to try the field goal. Don, one of the things that you have to understand as an offense decides during the week where the weakness in the defense is in goal line situations. They're going to stay with that play and stay with that thinking until proven otherwise. Billy Ray Smith makes an excellent tackle. He just beat the block of Mark Bavaro, 89. Joe Cooper from the University of California at Berkeley has been a law student in Fresno, California, summoned to replace injured Bob Thomas who was summoned to replace injured Ali Haji Sheik and Joe Cooper makes his first try as the Giant a good one and the Giants take the lead three to nothing with 6-10 to play in the first quarter. This is it. The moment they find out if their car has got what it takes. They've done everything they could. Which is why two out of three Indy 500 drivers rely on STP oil treatment. Because when it comes right down to it, STP adds extra lubrication to reduce engine wear in whatever you drive. STP is the racer's edge. Managing information means storing it, finding it, and moving it from A to B. When that meant linking 800 miles of Alaskan pipeline, they called Contel. When it meant matching orders to inventory at the Stoneham Lumber Company, they called Contel. Small business, a small order. Contel can help you manage information better, too. For Contel, I'm Charlton Nest. An urgent message from the Mazda Hotline. It's year-end clearance time, and factory cash allowances mean great deals on every Mazda truck. Trucks rated first in customer satisfaction, like B2000, dollar for dollar, the best truck buy in America. At $63.95, it's the lowest price leading import with all these standard features. And right now, you can get it for hundreds less. Hurry to your Mazda dealer's year-end clearance and save. Next Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Dolphins battle the Jets. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Giant Stadium. A look at NBC Sports 10-minute ticker. The Raiders have gone in front of the favorite Redskins at Washington 3-0 on a Chris Barfield goal. Now Houston has taken a 7-0 lead on the Cleveland Browns. They're playing at the Astrodome. Oilers look like they might be the real thing this year. Yeah, did, I also see, uh, did I also see that Philadelphia leads Chicago 3-0? Three, three and a half quarters to be played, though. Yes. But still, that's more Buddy Ryan versus Mike Ditka than the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Chicago Bears. Bill Sims, who directed the 11-play drive downfield that resulted in Joe Cooper's field goal on the phones now as the Giants are set to kick off. Cooper hits a short one. Lionel James comes up, gets it on the run. The man they call Little Train James, he's 5'6", caught 86 passes last year and led the Chargers in rushing, receiving, and in kickoff returns. Returns at 19 yards as Joe Morris takes a break and the Chargers get set to move the ball again if they can. Dan Fouts in his 14th year at quarterback for San Diego. Came in as a third-round draft choice in 1973. John Unitas was closing out his playing days with the Chargers. Then he said that was a great help to him. Accelerated his progress in the NFL.
Wes Chandler was looking in and Dan Fats was firing out and Kenny Hill was the nearest to the ball. So again the Chargers missed fire on first down as second and long. Got an interesting choice by the New York Giants in that particular play. And Lawrence Taylor dropping back in coverage. The San Diego Chargers had Kellen Winslow there to help pass protection for Dan Fouts. Jaworski there is still in the league, of course, starting for the Eagles, and Joe Ferguson's a backup at Detroit. Quick in. And Fouts against a big rush, skips it into West Chandler, so it's incomplete. We have five minutes and 51 seconds to play in the first quarter. The Giants lead the game three to nothing. really news when Fouts doesn't throw for 300 yards. He's had 47 career 300-yard games, but he's off to a slow start today. He's one for four for minus two yards. Giants playing strong defense. Third and ten now for San Diego. And again, Fouts throws high. What could be a factor here also? This has a big frown at the field at Giant Stadium. Big rise in the middle for drainage, and San Diego plays in a flat grass field at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. Balls do tend to sail if you're not used to the crown like that one did on Fouts. Big match up there. Jim Lachey, 74, versus Lawrence Taylor. Obviously, the Chargers want to assign a big man on Lawrence Taylor. That is an offensive lineman. You can't turn Taylor loose on any running back. They run right through him to your quarterback. Chargers with uh, two of those... United Nations kickers. Moshenko kicks it downfield. Banerska, the place kicker. Good roll. There'll be no return. The ball's out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Manuel's looking at it. It's a 45 yard punt by Ralph Moshenko. So the Giants, with a 3 0 lead, get set to go on offense for a third time in the first quarter. We'll be back to Giant Stadium after this. An urgent message from the Mazda Hotline. 626s are really moving at your Mazda dealer's year-end clearance. Mazda 626, the family sedan with world-class road car credentials. With standard features like front-wheel drive, independent rear suspension, and fuel-injected engine, it's already an outstanding value. But during your Mazda dealer's year-end clearance, the deals are even better. See him today and save. Aha, there's a thief in this attic. This skimpy amount of insulation can rob you bland on your fuel bill. Fight back with the attic blanket from Owens Corning. It's the thickest, most powerful roll of pink insulation you can add. It can help you save money on your fuel bill. It is an open and shut case. Owens Corning, we put your house in the pink. Mount Hood, Oregon, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Mount Hood means the best summer skiing in America. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer. A smooth, golden old Milwaukee life. Nothing like the flavor of a special place. And old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee life. Man, it doesn't get any better than this. The American Bar Association ain't gonna like L.A. law one bit. Lawyers. But their members are sure as heck gonna watch it. A two-hour movie preview of L.A. law, Monday. Last week, the San Diego Chargers had over 500 yards offense against the divisional champion Miami. Today, Fouts is firing blanks here. Right? Yeah, last week they had 12 drives in which they scored nine times. So far, Giants done an excellent job of shutting off San Diego completely. Giants lead in the th first quarter, three to nothing, as Carthon takes on the San Diego defense. A couple of big pops laid on him. Billy Ray Smith came up, and also Chuck Ian, the nose tackle. Ian, 78, has the tough job in there. He must fight off that center, make the center just block him. You see, Bart Oates gets cut, and 78, Chuck Ian, there to help on the tackle, along with Billy Ray Smith. Pick of about three or four yards. Lots of Joe Morris to this point. Only guy who's carried the ball. Second down and six. Hit ball and almost intercepted. Somebody coming on at Phil Sims got a hand on the ball and Danny Wallers almost had a play on it. 
So it brings up third down and six now for the Giants, who lead three to nothing in the first quarter. Stacy Robinson, the intended receiver. Interesting thing about Phil Sims used to be breakable. And about two years ago, he started lifting weights heavily. He's probably the only quarterback in the NFL who still lifts during the season four days a week. In the last two years, has not missed a snap. Taking every snap, and he was in the hospital a lot of the time, his early part time in the year. In the league, it's the seventh year out of Moorhead State. Bill Sims and the Giants go from the shotgun on third down and six. Good throw and an equally good catch by Stacy Robinson out to the 34-yard line. So Sims fires a bullseye on the third down play for a 12-yard gain, and the Giants get new downs and move the ball out to their 35. Don, one of the things that makes a receiver a popular receiver with a quarterback is familiarity. And in the case of Stacy Robinson, moved to the New York area, stayed here in the offseason, worked out daily with Phil Sims. Sims probably knows Stacy Robinson, even, even though he's a backup, better than any other receiver on uh, this giant team. Charger offense without a first down so far. Here's Joe Morris on the run. Not much. As he is out to the 36-yard line. Jeffrey Dale and Leslie O'Neill were on the stop as we look at the 10-minute ticker again. Eagles continue to lead the Bears at Chicago. Buffalo with the field goal now, trailing at Cincinnati 7-3. Atlanta looking good. They blew out New Orleans opening game at the King at the Superdome, and now they're up 14-0 on St. Louis. It's second down and over nine yards to go for the Giants, who lead 3-0 in the first quarter. No catch. Ball. No, they're ruling a no catch. No catch. Solomon Miller, a rookie from Utah State, very fast. Say he's a little bit undisciplined in his pass route, so. Much 54, Billy Ray Smith. He is the guy who not only plays linebacker, but doubles as a defensive lineman. Carthen does a good job to keep him off Phil Sims. Still contact, and we have a San Diego Charger down. It is Danny Walters, it appears. No, Wayne Davis, you say? You got to check that number, Trump, is there's 3.28 to play in the first quarter. Went down on deep pass coverage. San Diego has been in recent years a 3-4 read defense. There wasn't a lot of blitzing, and they were eaten alive. They had one defense. They've had three defensive coordinators in the last year. Danny Wallers is down, so Coach Coriel not deep in the secondary. The first to be fired, and just didn't have the personnel, was Boss Hogg, Tom Bass. After one particularly bad performance, he said he wasn't going to watch the game films. He was going to get the Terminator and watch somebody else get killed. <laughs> yeah, then it was uh, Dave Adolph, stayed for the rest of the season and went to Cleveland. There are some scores in the first period since the 97 Buffalo. Ron Lynn is now the defensive coordinator of the Chargers. You mentioned earlier they were very much buoyed by their performance against the Cowboys in the preseason. They shut out Dallas 23 nothing. Felt they could be a pretty good defensive football team. Miami only had the ball 21 minutes against San Diego last week. It scored 28 points with the Chargers with over 500 yards offense. Surrounded the Shula Dolphins 50 to 28. Dolphins ran a grand total of 39 plays. Offensive plays to the San Diego Chargers, 70 offensive plays. So if nothing else, this Charger defense should be well rested after week one. They're sending a rookie in from Donald Brown, a fifth round draft choice from Maryland. He's going to get a lot of work. And so with the injury to Danny Wallers now, the cart comes out and he's going to be helped off the field. Apparently a leg injury. Can't look any worse. Be taken off on a cart. Of course, this team, everyone in San Diego certainly remembers the injury to Kellen Winslow a couple of years ago. That was on grass. Kellen Winslow is all the way back now as Danny Walters goes off. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Giants and the National Football League is prohibited. We have 3.28 to go in the first quarter. The Giants lead the game 3-0 on a Joe Cooper field goal. Chargers unable to get on track on offense. 
There is Donald Brown, the rookie from Maryland, coming in to replace injured Danny Walters at right corner. And that might be where Phil Sims is looking at a third and ten play from the shotgun. all the way down inside the 35-yard line of San Diego as Phil Sims throws a fastball right on the numbers, resulting in a 35-yard gain for the Giants. Sims now 5 of 8 for 93 yards in the first quarter here. And he has good time to throw it. Lots of protection. The San Diego Chargers don't come close to him. He waits for Manuel to break open over the middle total zone coverage by San Diego and then it's a foot race thrown hard to the mat 35 yard gain by the New York Giants Lionel Manuel shaken up now he's the Giants most important wide receiver last year he caught 49 to lead the Giants but that would only place him fourth on the San Diego receiving chart Everybody catches a lot at San Diego. Lionel James led with 86. Wes Chandler at 67. Charlie Joyner at 59. Now this uh, San Diego offense is one of the few offenses that as an offensive player, when you go to the bench and you're playing San Diego, you'll sit there and watch them. See what they do and see how they get it done. So far, with no first downs with 3.07 to go in the first quarter, they haven't shown much. Well, Phil Sims, the Giants quarterback, and went to the Pro Bowl and was named most valuable player, said the biggest thing he got out of going to the Pro Bowl was working with Dan Fouts yeah. and watching him work. He said he learned a lot just watching him work for the AFC. This injury certainly hurts because Bobby Johnson already out with a bad ankle. Manuel looks like he got his bell rung. Lionel Manuel shaken up. And he's out of the game, but the Giants are moving right now. They have the ball first down and 10 inside the 31-yard line of San Diego. Clock running, 2.58 to play first quarter. The Giants are in the lead, 3-0. a lead block and takes on the Chargers moving the ball down close to a first down at the 21 yard line report up from the sideline that Danny Walters who went out for San Diego their starting cornerback went down with an Achilles tendon injury Not oh good. my goodness AstroTurf sometimes does that to you although this is an excellent artificial surface very very soft on Chargers defense last week allowed Miami just 45 yards rushing the New York Giants already in the first quarter 32 yards rushing. Joe Morris doesn't see much. Billy Smith comes in, knocks him down quickly. Also on the play was Leslie O'Neill. But it's enough for the first down on a second and one, so the Giants move on. They're just inside the San Diego 20. Giants leading 3 0 first quarter. This is the spot where the ball goes. An excellent job by the offensive line. Brad Benson, number 60. Bart Oates, Carthen, a good lead block there, but look at all those San Diego Chargers fill that spot. Good gang tackling by the Chargers. It's a blitz. It's a blitz. They pick it up, and Joe Morris runs to open field and gets down to the 17-yard line on a first down carry. He got three. Inside linebacker Thomas Benson got him for San Diego. See, a lot of teams, Don, use the form of the Chicago Bear defense made famous last year by Buddy Ryan. It's Achilles heel is if you can break through the line of scrimmage there is one guy there to make the tackle in that particular case Thomas Benson did in fact make the tackle. Tenth play of the drive coming up now for the Giants they lead three nothing they're down to the 16 yard line of San Diego. Blitz and Sims is caught and knocked down back of the 26 yard line Billy Ray Smith who had two sacks in the outside linebacker position last week against Miami and forced two fumbles. But subsequently named AFC Defensive Player of the Week gets him. He's untouched. He's on the tight end side. Bavaro releases inside of him. The offensive line generally slides to pick up the blitz on the outside. No one touched Billy Ray Smith. A free shot on Phil Sims. And Lionel Manuel's back in the game after being shaken up early. He's coming out on the near flank. Along with Solomon Miller, the top of your screen is Stacy Robinson. A lot of speed on the flanks for the Giants on third down and 16. What a 
Joe Morris. He's going to put it up. Sims. Phil Sims. Oh! Something out of the Denver Broncos playbook a week ago here we in Denver. Broncos ran that against the Raiders, and John Elway went in the end zone for a touchdown. That was a well-thrown ball by Tony Galbraith. Sims was wide open. He's not going to win many foot races. But it's right there. He shouldn't have jumped. Receivers learn that when you go to catch the football, you don't go off the ground. Am I right, Ahmad? The man jumped. Is it? Look what I got. And when he jumped, gone. That's the first time they've thrown him in his seven-year career. Last time. He's the second player in the league from Moorhead State. Former Giant tight end Gary Shirk was the other. Now 43-yard field goal attempt by Joe Cooper is thinned up. No. The cross bar, it's no good. Thing about that play down, I bet all week in practice they ran that play. Sims caught it, looked like a moderate shot. Right. Gets in the game, he looks like Bob me. Trumpy. What do you mean, Ahmad? Here's the field goal that hits the crossbar. Good hole. That's into the wind. This ball just seems to be stopped almost in dead air. That's a pretty good shot hitting that crossbar. No good from 43 yards. So Joe Cooper is one for two as a giant, having been brought in just a couple of days ago. And now the Chargers go to the run. The big back from Ohio State, Tim Spencer, takes it to the 30-yard line. First down carry good for about four. George Martin knocked him down. Raiders and the Redskins tied up now three all in the first quarter. Philadelphia leading into the second quarter at Chicago. Dallas up on Detroit. No change in Buffalo Cincinnati. Houston continues to lead Cleveland. Atlanta with that 14 to nothing lead. And New Orleans extending its lead now 17 to three over the Packers. Time runs out in the first quarter. The gun sounds, and after the first 15 minutes of play, the San Diego offense did nothing. Giants lead the game 3 0. This year, one out of every six cars will need to have its brakes repaired. That's why at Midas, we offer a free brake inspection. If your car needs work, you know it's being done by experts. 500,000 people a year have their brakes fixed at Midas. And we're glad to have the business. But more important, we appreciate the trust. Take it to Midas. Take it to someone you trust. I'm Lionel James of the San Diego Chargers, and this is the new San Diego, where my new life in the NFL has begun. For me, it all began here on the back roads of Georgia. Coming home to Putney, Georgia, is like coming back to all the love and warmth that you can only find in your family. Whatever strength I have comes from these people and in this place. And who would have known that this football would be my ticket to the NFL and make all my dreams come true? I may be the smallest man in the NFL, but I don't think it's how big you are. I think it's really the size of your heart that counts. That's why I work as a United Way volunteer here in San Diego through programs like this daycare center. So join me as a United Way volunteer, and when you do, you're saying that there's still a place in this country for the little guy. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. This message furnished by the National Football League. First quarter numbers, look at the Chargers who ran up over 500 yards offense last Sunday against the Miami Dolphins, a divisional champion. Today, this powerful giant defense has shut them down completely. No first downs yet for Fouts and the Chargers. Bill Parcells and the coaching staff of the Kansas City Chiefs by John McAmiff. McAvick, both McAvick and Parcells were at uh, West Point together. Parcells sent his defensive people out to Kansas City study what they do against the Chargers because Kansas City has done a pretty good job against San Diego over the years. Let's see what the Chargers can do now on second down and six. Here comes Lionel James. Boy, he takes a bump and the free ball is on the field. The Giants might have it. They think they do. A lot of points. Lawrence Taylor came in. He's at 245 and Lionel James is about 180. No contest as Lawrence Taylor forces the fumble and the Giants get it back. Last week against Miami, San Diego did not turn the ball over from the backside. This is where Lawrence Taylor is most dangerous. You see him there to make the hit. Carl Along Banks with 58, Carl, Carl Banks, Banks on the bottom, ball loose. And the scramble, that's where blunt instruments are used, guns, knives, needles, you name it. 
And the Giants come away with it. So Coach Coriel seeing his high power offense sputter against an excellent defense and the Giants get the ball on the first turnover of the game. Giants lead 3-0 in the second quarter. Five years in the league prior to this and five times in the Pro Bowl. John, this has been San Diego's problems. Problem in 1985, they were 6-2 and two at home, just 2-6 and six away. And worth repeating, they're on a six-game losing streak on the road as an official is being attended to by the medical staff of the New York Giants. Might be the referee. Now he wears the black yeah, hat. No, he's not the referee. It might be the umpire. He stands in there behind looking at the quarterback, stands in the middle of the defense. Next Saturday on NBC Sports, the 1986 baseball season continues. Join us as the Red Hots Boston Red Sox travel north to take on the Toronto Blue Jays or the California Angels, led by rookie sensation Wally Joyner, host the Chicago White Sox. The action gets underway at 3 o'clock Eastern time with Major League Baseball, an inside look. Check your local listings for the game in your area as the Giants now come out of the huddle. First and 10 at their 32-yard line. I'd go deep right Giants. here, Don. I'd go deep right here. They're looking that way. Long ball, Stacy Robinson. He's got the ball out of bounds. And he's hurt. Stacy Robinson went high but came down with it out of bounds. Very nearly a big hit for the Giants. The rookie Donald Brown in coverage. He uses that sideline very, very well. No pretense is here by Phil Sims. Straight drop back pass. Get it out there where Stacy Robinson can catch it. Brown right there with him. Let's see what happens. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him. We'll count him back in just as soon as he catches his breath. Excellent second look. You could see he was not in when he came down. Our producer today for NBC Sports is George Finkel, our director, John Gonzalez. The executive producer of NBC Sports, Mike Weissman, the coordinating producer for football, Ted Nathanson, as we now have a left 1446 to play in the first half, and the Giants are holding to a 3-0 lead. Chargers haven't been close to a scoring chance. Giants have had two. Joe Cooper, their newly acquired place kicker, hit a field goal. And his second drive bounced off the crossbar. Don, they have been close to a first down. Right. I mean, the closest they've had in a third down situation, I believe, is third and six. Have yet to convert. We're also losing people down there today. Starting cornerback Danny Walters went down with an Achilles tendon injury. It's unlikely he'll be back today. Now the Giants have Stacy Robinson down. Back after this. The Florida Everglades and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Everglades means airboating, as close as you can get to flying without leaving the ground. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place in old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Hey, guys. It doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, I know I need life insurance, but I hate spending money on something I hope I'll never use and won't be around to enjoy if it ever is used. Leave it to the good hands, people. Allstate has life insurance that pays you for living. Allstate Universal Life. It protects your family if you die, and it can provide competitive earnings for your retirement. So, my family's set if I'm gone, and I'm in the money if I stick around. <laughs> I think I'll stick around. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Every Monday through Friday, Mike Horner drives his Chevy S10 4x4 to work. Hi, Mike. But on Friday, November 9th, Mike made a different kind of commute. The Baja 1000, North America's most punishing off-road race. Could an everyday Chevy S10 survive? It not only survived, it won its class. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. And now, the big one. Get 2.9% financing or up to $750 cash rebates on most new 86 Chevy trucks. Today's game is brought to you by Today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Life, it doesn't get any better than this. And by National Car Rental, you deserve national attention. Don, they're dropping like flies. Stacy Robinson now taking off on a stretcher. With the second look, it looks like oh, he yeah. lands on his right back. Right shoulder. 
Now the Giants have to go after that near miss or near hit. And here's a big shot coming in from the secondary was Kevin Wyatt. Rookie defensive back from Arkansas shot the gap and made the hit in the backfield. So it'll be third and long now for the Giants. They are much more attacking defense. Yes, they are. In previous seasons, I think they pretty much a lay back, play a total zone, hope to knock the ball loose. Now they are attacking the line of scrimmage, but then almost everybody is after Chicago, Chicago's success last year with that bare defense. Tony Galbraith in the game. They have Bavaro lined up in the backfield to block or to run a route out of the shotgun formation on third down and just over 15. Long ball, no one near it, and again a penalty marker is down in the Chargers secondary. They're going to call the rookie, it looks like, on it. Donald Brown. Not close to a completion, but a San Diego mistake in the secondary could give the Giants a first down. You called it. Third and 16, the Giants didn't come close, but the rookie held, and it's a first down Giants. This is Lionel Manuel. I don't think that's the penalty. I believe they called it on He's off the play. Donald off Brown. The play. Dicker, not much changing on the second Sunday of play. Cincinnati now extends its lead. And we got Jeff Hostetler in the ball game and a wide receiver for the New York Giants here. I don't know what's going to happen. You take a timeout. Yeah. It is Parcells and the Giants have gone to the bag of tricks today. One didn't work the throw to Sims, but it was very nearly a touchdown back after this. Next time you go away for the weekend, turn your weekend into a national holiday. National Car Rental now offers you special low weekend rates on almost every car in our fleet with a wide variety to choose from. National Holiday Weekend Rates, as low as $19.95 a day. So if you're thinking of taking off, turn your weekend into a national holiday. Call National at 800-CAR-RENT. Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. No matter what you drive... What conditions you drive under. With mobile synthetic oil technology, there's no finer engine protection anywhere. Mobile One, on the leading edge of mobile motor oils. Glacier Bay, Alaska and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Glacier Bay means the one and only Alaskan King Crab. Sweet, fresh, and big. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. And Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Hey, guys. It doesn't get any better than this. This is Bob Costas in New York. What a core of receivers Boomer Esiason has with the Bengals. The veteran star, Chris Collinsworth. Rookie Tim McGee out of Tennessee. And this man's second-year speed burner, Eddie Brown from Miami. The touchdown gives the Bengals a 14-3 lead over the Bills in the second. Jeff Hostetler, a quarterback in at wide receiver. Nothing new for him. He did it five times last season. He's a good athlete. Pitch back to Carthon. Hostetler just a decoy, and the... San Diego Chargers read the run and shut it down. Coming up to make the hit was number 57. Thomas Benson was one of the first to get in there, along with Leslie O'Neill again. Don, I think the New York Giants are down to just two healthy wide receivers. Number 87, Solomon Miller, and 86, Lionel Manuel. Now, Bobby Johnson has been in a couple of plays. He goes to the far side of the field, but he's limping and limping badly. I'm not sure the Giants can count on him. Bobby Johnson's in for the first time. He was playing with an injury at Dallas Monday night. Did well. It's been exasperated a little bit. He's all right now. They say he's just in, though, for the first time. Here's a throw to Bavaro. He's got it. He's down to the one-yard line. Mark Bavaro outruns the defense. Hands outstretched at 29-yard reception. Fred Robinson was covering and not very well as 
Mark Bavaro had him beaten. Tell you what Bobby Johnson did by lining up a wide receiver. He drew single coverage on everybody. Here's Bavaro against Robinson, who is a huge linebacker and certainly not used to coverage. Converted defensive end. Bavaro with a nice catch and Sims with an outstanding throw. He's now caught three, has Mark Bavaro. That lasts for 29 yards. Three receptions for 58 yards. Giants leading 3 0 in the second quarter. Joe Morris, he's in, and the Giants go up 9 to nothing. More and more, Phil Sims is looking to the second year tight end Mark Bavaro as his ace, and Bavaro's responded seven catches against the Cowboys. Three already today, the last one setting up the game's first touchdown. Morris' second TD of the season. This is an excellent push by that New York Giant offensive line. There really wasn't a lot of work for Morris to do. You can see the first contact made. He's already in the end zone. Joe Cooper, the newly acquired place kicker now, set to try the point after, which if successful, will give the Giants a 10-0 lead. It's good. So another look at Joe Morris on the payoff end of a short run. 21 times last year, this guy got in the end zone. Excellent job by the offensive line of the New York Giants. Took advantage of the of the, the dead spot in that San Diego goal line defense. Good push. Easy six points. In a sense, a defensive touchdown. You remember the fumble recovery set this up. A five-play drive covering 32 yards. Be sure to join us one week from today for more exciting NFL action on NBC Sports. Your day gets underway with NFL 86 at 1230 Eastern Time. Join host Bob Costas along with teammates Ahmad Rashad, Paul McGuire, and Frank DeFord for all the latest news and scores from around the NFL. Then the Miami Dolphins, led by Dan Marino, take on the Jets here at Giant Stadium. Or the Denver Broncos travel to Philadelphia where quarterback John Elway looks to go after the Buddy Ryan defense. Be sure to check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Don, how can a team like the San Diego Chargers have such two distinct and different personalities at home absolutely invincible on the road I mean weak sisters I, I can't understand it they traveled in here Friday worked out here yesterday over the past two seasons they've won seven straight at home and have lost six straight on the road they're down 10 nothing today in the second quarter Lionel James you'll recall fumbled the last time he had it that was from scrimmage he goes down hard, and there's going to be a clip call against the Chargers on the coverage. Robbie Jones, a giant linebacker, came down to get him. Foul against the Chargers, so Fouts comes out with no offense to speak of today, and he'll start in a hole again. Last week, they ran 70 plays. This week, 13.07 to go in the second quarter. Eight plays. By my mathematics, that's a grand total of two yards total offense. Don Shula said the San Diego offense last week was the best offense he's seen in all his years in the National Football League. All the Giant coaches said the same after looking at films. But so far, Fouts and the Chargers shooting blanks into the second quarter. And Fouts in trouble. Let's it go on the run. It's intercepted by the Giants. Picked off by the free safety, Terry Kennard. He's not done as Terry Kennard is inside the 15-yard line. I think we Dan got a late Fouts hit. Is down. I think we got a late hit against Dan Fouts. That interception may not stand. Trump, that could be a roughing the passer. Absolutely. It was a late hit. The San Diego offense is going off the field. I don't think they realize that there's been a flag against the New York. Giants defense. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 55. Touchdown. Gary Reason. Dan Fouts is a gamer, though. Bounces up. He'll stay in there. Chargers in deep trouble if he goes down. The backup, Mark Herman, who's played very well in his absence in the past. He's hurt. Tom Flick, who's had very little experience, will be the man that'll come in if Fouts can't go. But Dan Fouts is staying in the game. Don Martin flushes him from the pocket. There you see the late hit right in the chest of Dan Fouts. I think that's a good call by the officials. Certainly no doubt that every team that plays San Diego tries to soften up Dan Fouts, but he's a tough cookie. Now the Chargers go from a new formation. 
Out stands in. He gets the ball to Buford McGee, and he gets some room to run, and Buford McGee both arms on the ball, and, well, he should have them on it as the Giants come a-hitting and knock him down at the 29-yard line. Gain of about five yards on the play. Harry Carson was the first to get him. In order to beat this San Diego offense, in my estimation, your linebackers have to play their best game of the year. They're the ones who are going to be in the area where the San Diego receivers catch the ball so much, that intermediate area. These giant linebackers are excellent tacklers, also have good speed for their size. Carson should make a lot of tackles. Get a power set, double tight ends. Dan Fouts as they pick up the blitz, stands in there. It goes, long ball, Gary Anderson is out there! And it looked like he was fouled, but there's no call. There, Perry Williams, who was covering, but from a yard behind, dove at him. Looked like he might have made contact before the ball came in, but the official right there says it was clean, so it's a long out for San Diego. Well, you can see his right there in his shirt. That ball thrown a little outside, but into the wind, that ball's going to... It's going to do some strange things. Anderson gets up and lobbies for interference. Some contact to no avail. Third down and about four. From the 29-yard line, Dan Fouts just two for seven throwing the ball for four yards. And we're in the second quarter with the Giants leading 10 to nothing. Giant fans come alive now as the defense comes to. Here's a throw and a completion. And it's a first down for the Chargers as the ball is advanced out to their 37-yard line. Kellen Winslow gets his first catch of the day. The 10-minute ticker. Philadelphia still leading the Bears at Chicago into the second quarter. Dallas still up on Detroit. Not much changing elsewhere. New Orleans having a big day against the Packers, who looked like a bad ball club this year. They were blasted by Houston last week at home. Now they're getting cleaned out at the Superdome. First down for the Chargers as Fouts takes a look. Stands in, open man. Kellen Winslow drops the ball. Looked at the defense and dropped a wide open catch. Interesting that the San Diego Chargers very seldom use an audible. No matter what defense they face, Al Saunders, their offensive coordinator, told me before the game that the responsibility to beat a certain defense is the receiver's responsibility. Adjustments in the patterns. Dan Fouts reads them. They all have receivers at about the same spot. That time, Fouts just... Winslow just took his eye off the ball, Don. Fouts now three for nine for just 11 yards. Second down and 10. A little frame, James. Giants pound him. Jim Burt, the nose tackle, made the stop as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC TV, New York. Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands of New Jersey, nearby to New York City, a perfect September day. Temperature in the 60s, clear and sunny. Wind not a factor. And the Giants defense has been, though, they're shutting down this high power San Diego offense. It's averaged over 400 yards and 27 points a game last season. Out looks. He's going long. Foot race on. He's looking at Anderson. And look at the catch by Anderson, but he got it out of bounds. A player that many of the San Diego coaches say is the best athlete they've ever seen. Gary Anderson started the U.S. Football League a couple of years. Look at this acrobatic catch. But out of bounds. Perry Williams, though, once again stays with him stride for stride. Uses that sideline. And he's clearly out of bounds. So the Chargers finally get a first down, but now they've got to punt the ball back to the Giants, who lead 10 0 with 10 34 to play in the first quarter. One hopper, Moshenko fields it like a shortstop and gets it away, and it bounces inside the 25-yard line, and now inside the 20, it goes out of bounds. So the Giants send their offensive unit out. One thing you can say about the San Diego defense today, it should be well-rested. It's not out there much. This is a very, very bad snap that Moshenko does an excellent job of, of picking up. The punt snapper for the San Diego Chargers is Dennis McKnight, known as... Conan, he just barely got it off. 
And I saw Jeff Hostetler on that punt return team for the New York Giants, too. They're hurting for people here. They have a 10 nothing lead as they go to the run on first down. And straight play is fullback Maurice Carthon, who drives across and close to the yard line. Big back block for Walker with the New Jersey Generals of the U.S. Giants a year ago. Joe Morris had an extended holdout here, as the Giant fans are aware. San Diego fans may not be. That was disconcerting. Threw their offense off. He came back last Monday night at Dallas. A deep pockets full of money. Dropping to throw is Phil Sims up the middle. Bavaro kills him again. The big tight end crashing through the San Diego defense. And he takes it all the way out across the 40-yard line to the 43. It's a 20-yard gain. One of the things that the tight end must do is he must read defenses. Watch what he does. He looks at that inside linebacker, number 56. Ty Allard just curls inside of him, and then once you try to get him down, then he shows his 6'5", 245 pounds. Hostetler's back in front as a wide receiver steps to the near side. First and ten. Morris. Finds a way. He's not big. 5'7", 190. One of the strongest Giants, though. Bench press, and that's a basic standard of measuring football players' strength with a closed grip in tight. 415 pounds. There's only two other players in the team that can do that. He's also got short arms. That helps a great deal. With the bench press. He's the all-time leading rusher at Syracuse, is Joe Morris. Now in his fourth year with the Giants. Set all the rushing records at Syracuse, breaking those set by NFL greats Jim Brown, Larry Zonka, Floyd Little, and Ernie Davis. Let's see what Sims goes to now on second down. He needs eight. Behind Bavaro. So it'll bring up third down. And while we have a moment, let's go to Bob Costas at NFL 86. Bob. All right, Don, you know the Buffalo Bills haven't won a road game since December of 1983. They're playing at Cincinnati today. This Rob Riddick run of six yards pulls them to within 14-9, but they missed the extra point. Back to Don and Bob. Thank you, Bob. Set to go now. Giant Stadium, third down and eight coming up. Sims has thrown 13 times, has completed seven for 142 yards. Fouts has almost nothing passing for San Diego. Long ball. Man is open. Lionel Manuel coming underneath the zone coverage, and Manuel's not down until he gets down to the 31-yard line of San Diego. Gil Bird finally ran him out, but it's the giant passing game that's deploying receivers all over the field and hitting the big plays. That one good for 23 yards. Watch Sims when he sets up. The Chargers do come with good pressure. 91, Leslie O'Neill right in his face, but as we documented earlier, with that in and weightlifting program, Sims is a very tough kid. Nice by a guy with a bad ankle. Giants lead 10 to nothing. Chargers send a safety blitz at Sims, but he gets it away, and it's off the fingertip of Johnson at the 24 yard line. Sims, Johnson, he took his helmet off and bounced it. <laughs> I guess he wants to complete every pass. He's big, 6'3", 225 pounds. But it's weightlifting, Trump. He goes through the regular lineman weightlifting regimen. And as you said, he's taken every snap the last two years after going down with two shoulder injuries, a knee injury, a fractured thumb in his earlier years in the league. I'd watch Bavaro here, top of the screen. I watched a lot. Giant gains from a hospital bed. Second and ten, opener is Joe Morris. He's inside the 20, and again, the Giants rip the Charger defense for a big gainer down to the 17-yard line. Oh, Chargers back to reality here. Joe Morris, not normally known as a receiver for the New York Giants. Bavaro ran a quarter pattern, and I think all of the Chargers expected Bavaro to get the ball. Morris standing out there again, uncovered. First and ten. Bill Parcells was emphasizing to us yesterday, Trump, that Joe Morris can't catch. Can't catch? 
And he was setting the Chargers up. He was pretty open about how he's saying it. Joe Morris getting some big receptions today as the Giants drive on. Now leading 10 nothing. Morris again as he is knocked down at the 16 yard line. Got only one in the first down carry. Chuck E on the nose tackle for the Chargers got him. Last week against Miami the Charger offense was on the field almost all day long 39 possession minutes to 21 as they say about time of possession all that counts is who gets the game ball who possesses that right now the Giants have a 10 nothing lead with six minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first half showing a lot of offensive looks they didn't show at Dallas on Monday night the power intercepted. It's picked up by Leslie O'Neill. He gets open field. He's as fast as any lineman in the NFL. The rookie number one draft choice from Oklahoma State. First turnover by the Giants today. That ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Navarro had very little chance to catch it. It bounced off his shoulder pads. He comes underneath all the coverage. And I think Leslie O'Neill was the guy who got his hand on it. Watch. You see him try to catch it desperately. Bounces off a helmet. Leslie O'Neill. That's Thomas Benson in coverage. You see 91 right at the bottom of the screen. Who gets their hand on it? That is Leslie O'Neill. He does get his hand on it. Then he makes the catch. Chargers ball. That's why he gets the big bucks, right? Yeah, that's it. Here's Fouts, hands up. Buford McGee, nothing. Giants stick him and they go for the football. As we go to NBC Sports, 10-minute ticker. Numbers the same on the opening panel. Raiders and Skins still 3-3 in the second quarter. Second. Dallas continues to lead. Buffalo now down by five at Cincinnati. Houston continues to lead the Browns. Atlanta looking for a second straight win still up. Dan Fouts after a loss of a yard on that carry will now go to the run or to the pass on a second down and 11. Kellen Winslow gets free. Hey, these Giants. In ill humor after a poor showing at Dallas, Harry Carson blasted the big tight end, Kevin Winslow. Not as gifted an athlete as Don, Dan Fouts is. The only position on the field who is a position of that is a position of choice is quarterback. My way of thinking in this first half, Dan Fouts has not made very good choices. Winslow was thoroughly covered that time, and Pete Holland was wide open. The one guy's been getting open is. Gary Anderson, he's coming out to the near flank. West Chandler in motion, he's been quiet. Out looks. Nobody. Oh, nowhere near West Chandler. The giant pass rush skill is the uh, one that caused that incompletion as a marker also goes down at the line of scrimmage. They're probably holding to keep him off bounce. Talked about what Parcells was saying at the Giant practice that they've got to attack an area four yards behind the San Diego center. Don Mesa, because that's where they'll find Fouts, and they've got to attack from the inside. Declined. Fourth down. They got there quickly on that play, put the heat on, and Fouts threw it away. Holding penalty is declined as the Chargers come up empty again. Their offense, three downs and out, is off the field. The Giant defense gets a standing salute from the 76,000 here in their home ball yard. And Moshenko comes out to punt the ball for the Chargers. <laughs> Moshenko again does his job very well, getting a one-hop snap. Lionel Manuel turns outside. There's a channel of blockers, and markers also go down on the field as the Giants might have been guilty of an illegal block. Mojenko's fair game once that ball hits the turf on the snap. They can come in and cream him before or after he kicks the ball. Jim Leonard was the punt snapper on that particular down. Bounced it back there. Illegal use of the hands. Number 58. First down. Carl Banks guilty of the infraction. But the Giants have the ball back and they continue to lead 10 to nothing. This is it. Pass offense starts with pass blocking, and the Giants have done a much better job of that, keeping people off Phil Sims. Fouts has been harassed throughout. Carthon almost loses it, and the Chargers come calling as they send a defensive back, strong safety Gil Bird on a blitz. Knocked down in the backfield. It'll be second down and 12. On the San Diego offense, 
just sitting on the bench, kind of wondering what's going on. They're down to the left. Look at that. All in a row. Nobody's saying a word to them. There's the scoreboard, 237 to 20. Ernie Zampezi, the offensive coordinator, I saw him before the game. He said, you look a little worried after a 500-yard day against Miami. He said, you'd look worried, too, if you just watched films of the giant linebackers. And they've been a big difference. Here's a throw by Sims as he gets it out to Carthon. Got a few, not many. Four-yard gain on the play. It'll be third down and eight. I got to give credit to Phil Sims. That's Carthon's first catch of the season. With all of the wide receivers now hurt, Stacy Robinson down, Bobby Johnson with a bad ankle. Sims is finding receivers that he doesn't generally go to and making good pickups. That was only for a couple of yards, but still makes the defense cover Maurice Carthon anytime he goes out there. So Sims, as he's done often in the first half with the Giants leading 10 0, sets up in the shotgun on third down and eight. Giants have to punt. Stams was looking for interference. Lado Manuel, the intended receiver, the linebacker all over him. You can see Stams yelling at the official. Keep him off our guys. Now after he throws it, there's Ian right in his face. And he's saying, come on, call the hole. Landeno ready now for his second punt of the day. Over end kick as little train James gets it. He can make you miss. Uh-oh, trains on the run. And the Chargers start out with their best field position of any drive in this first half. 446 to go in the first half. Chargers down 10 to nothing. 19-yard return. NFL 86 is coming up at halftime. Scores in the highlights from the second Sunday of play. Lots of upsets week one. Right now, the Giants coming in here favored, holding to a 10 to nothing lead as the San Diego Chargers have very little offense. Fouts hasn't had time to generate it. They say Dan Fouts' mind operates at shutter speed when he's dropping back and checking defenses, but the Giants have been quicker than that. Buford McGee. A hard-earned five up the gut down to the 39-yard line of the Giants. Gary Reasons hit him. This is the farthest that the San Diego Chargers have gotten the ball so far in this first half. At the New York Giant 39. And it looks like San Diego going with the short stuff now. Give it to Buford McGee, Gary Anderson, Tim Spencer. Let him run with it. Second down, a long five for the Chargers. Bouts and a good play by Buford McGee, and he puts out a move and gets a first down to the 29-yard line. Buford McGee with a 10-yard gain. Elvis Patterson knocked him down. He avoided the tackle of Harry Carson. Now, you watch McGee come out of the backfield. Harry Carson is the linebacker just at the 35 underneath. Now watch him. He's going towards the ball. McGee makes the catch one hand and avoids the tackle. Excellent job of catching the ball and also catching side of that defender to avoid the tackle. Ellis Patterson, the guy the Giant players called Toast because he got burned a lot. He said it was because he's the toast of the town. Nonetheless, here's Dan Fouts. Gary Anderson's there. It's a touchdown, Chargers. 29-yard throw to Gary Anderson, who's had a step on the defense all day long, but they haven't been able to get the ball right on there. That time, Fouts did. Lobbing it in, it's a TD for the Chargers. Kenny Hill, the strong safety at the bottom of the screen, right there at the bottom of the screen, is forced to cover, it, cover really a wide receiver, even though he's got a, a running back number. Anderson does a great job of not sticking his hands up there. Kenny Hill never knows when the ball is approaching the receiver, therefore he can make the catch. He is a gifted athlete, one that Dan Fouts likes to go to a lot. Finally, the Chargers make a connection on offense, and they're in the game now. The extra point is up and good by Ralph Benerschia. And with three minutes and 24 seconds to play in the first half, it's the Giants 10 and the Chargers 7. That's just the third first down that the San Diego Chargers have registered in this first half. You see the time he has to throw it. He is on the money, and Anderson doesn't make a big deal about the ball's coming. Kenny Hill never realizes it. 
and as miserably as the San Diego offense has played this first half, they're just three points back. So the NBC Sports 10-minute ticker showing not a whole lot happening, at least on the first panel, as we have 324 to play in the first half, and it's a 10-7 game Giants. Cleveland's on the board at the Astrodome, trailing the Oilers 7-3. St. Louis tightening things up at Atlanta, and the Saints having a big day, leading the Packers by 21 at halftime. We'll be going to Bob Costas and the crew at NFL 86 at halftime. Right now, with just uh, 3.24 to go in the first half, Gary Anderson counting some winnings for the Chargers with a 29-yard touchdown reception. Now Mark Collins is back deep, a rookie, along with the veteran Kenny Hill. Spinning kick. Kenny Hill. Ran into his own guy. Penalty marker down. The Giants will start out in a hole after a 15-yard return, but a lot of that will come back on the penalty. That's Carl Banks, number 58, the guy he ran into, pushed the San Diego. Hurt. Yeah, pushed the San Diego Charger. Holding number 84. Whoops, Zeke Moore. They got the hole. There was also a clip on. Carl Banks, but nevertheless, the Giants start half the distance to the goal from the spot where the infraction took place. It'll be first and 92. <laughs> 92 to get to the end zone. Bill Sims, Joe Morrison, Maurice Carthon in his backfield. Going to put it up from the goal line. Bavaro, free ball. Bavaro has it. It's incomplete. Not ruled a catch. That's twice now. Bavaro had it shaken free and recovered it, but that's ruled an incomplete pass. We've got the instant replay official here with us in Giant Stadium. There's Billy Ray Smith, who doesn't do a very good job of holding up Bavaro. Now watch. He's got to have both feet down. One, two. Never really had control of it. Good call by the officials. He juggled it. No completion. His teammates called Bavaro Rambo. Somebody asked him how he likes the name. He says, it's not my name. He doesn't talk a lot, Mark Bavaro. Even to his closest friends, he doesn't talk a lot. He does put people on stretchers, though, and he brings that forearm up in the open field. Chargers from a smack on Lionel Manuel. He ended the career of some defensive backs at Notre Dame in inter-squad scrimmages. That's Thomas Benson on the hit on Lionel Manuel. And the Charger defense a little charge here. Tell you what, if the Charger defense can at least make the Giants punt, uh, this San Diego offense is a one play in the end zone offense. Stanley has got to convert this one. Got in the near flank, and he is hobbling on a bad ankle. It's now the Giants with long yardage go from the shotgun. Good rush. Sim gets it away, though, and the ball is taken in by Mark Bavaro. Did he get it? Looks like he did. They're going to give him the spot. First down, Giants. Giants' best play of the day. It was the toughest to make. Billy Ray Smith in coverage. Once again, you see Bavaro has a free release. Nobody's really bothering him. Now, from this angle, there's a bump, too. But from this angle, there's no way we can tell whether the catch is good or not. From behind the defense. Still can't see it. The replay, the replay official can't see it either, so the catch stands. First down. The battle's already cut five in the first pass for 89 yards. Remember that 29 yarder to set up the touchdown for the Giants. Joe Morris gets it over the middle on first down. Struck down at the 23-yard line. Game clock ticking down to the two-minute warning. Ty Allard, a rookie inside linebacker from Texas, hit Joe Morris. Two minutes to play in the half. Giants holding to a 10-7 lead. We'll be back to Giant Stadium after this. Over the years, one company has risen above the ordinary and brought innovation to insurance. Transamerica, for insurance and financial services, 
The power of the pyramid is working for you. Here's news for car owners that's a shock. Sears new heavy-duty gas shock at a special introductory price. Just $9.99 each plus installation. Save $5. You get the smooth, stable ride and higher performance of a gas shock for under $10. And Sears will install them at half off the installation charge. The new Sears heavy-duty gas shock. Another way we install confidence. There's more for your life at Sears. It bounced. It bounced. Does your bank account make you feel embarrassed? Get City One from Citibank. It's good. It's good. And feel the confidence of no-bounce checking. When you want cash for a deposit and check, does your bank upset you? Get City One. It makes banking simple. City One combines checking, savings, and credit cards in one account. Deposit that check and get cash from it instantly. Plus 24-hour access to it all. Feel what it's like to have the best bank account. City One. Right. Last time these two teams played, 75 points were put up. So far, only two touchdowns today. The Giants with a three-point lead. And, Don, you got to be impressed with Phil Simms with the injuries he has to his wide receiver. Still 12 of 23, 199 yards. New York with 15 first downs in his first half. Just three for the San Diego Chargers. Simms with a second and six. He's going for almost 200 yards, 199. Third sack of the day is recorded by the Charger defense. Lee Big Cat Williams comes in from the left end. Last week they got Marino four times. You see what appears to be part of that bear defense. The three defensive linemen sunk down inside. Now the Chargers should be taking timeouts here. The clock stops on a sack inside of two minutes, but it's just for the offense to get reassembled. Jeff Hostetler near side as a wide receiver, Don. Giants are 5 of 10 on third down conversions at this point. We're going to Hostetler. Did his best but couldn't make the connection, and so the Giants have to punt, and the Chargers will get, get it back with 125 now showing on the second quarter clock. And that play cost the San Diego Chargers 25 seconds. The Chargers have... I believe three timeouts left. Now they have two timeouts left. You got to save those timeouts. Here's the punt. Be a tough one to handle. It takes a hop, and the Giants down it at midfield. So let's see what Fouts and the Charger offense can do with 76 ticks left on the first half clock. 116 to go, and the Chargers, as you see, with two timeouts. Ready to go back on offense. You'll remember they scored their last possession on the touchdown throw, 29 yards out. Fouts to Gary Anderson. Now, I want to remind you, last week against the Dallas Cowboys, this is where the Giants had big problems. Cowboys went 60 yards for three points at the end of the first half and went 72 yards for six points at the end of the game. Spread formation, one setback. Giants send a blitz. Buford McGee picks it up beautifully. Wes Chandler can't get to the ball at the giant 26-yard line. Gary Anderson, even though he lines up as a running back, is really considered a wide receiver. That's 34 Elvis Patterson in coverage. Pushes him right to the ground. It's called holding, but only if you get caught. Well, you give him two points for a takedown. Go back to the huddle. Where it is second down and 10 for the Chargers. Just inside the Giants, 49-yard line. 10-7, Giants lead. Clock stop with 1.12 to go in the first half. At halftime, we go to NFL 86. Fouts dumps it off. Kellen Winslow is hit and hard. Andy Hedden, a huge linebacker from Clemson. 6'5", 248 pounds. Leveled him. Short of the first down, we'll be back to Giant Stadium after this. You can take For people who know where they're going, now the big one. Get 2.9% financing or up to $1,000 cash rebates on new 86 Chevy cars.
Minute and four seconds left to go in the first half here at Giant Stadium. Don Crickey with Bob Frumpy as the Giants, after leading 10 to 7, now have seen their lead cut to 10 to nothing, now seen their lead cut to 10 to 7. And the Chargers have a chance at more points if they can make it go here. Third down, though, coming up for San Diego. The 43 yard line of the Giants, third down and about four. What do you look for here, Trump? I look for Winslow just to pick up the first down. You can see that the Chargers have had big trouble converting third down so far in this first half. Anderson's on a rookie cornerback to the near flank. That might be where they're going. Here's the snap. Gary Anderson makes the reception, and he's ahead for what appears to be a first down as the game clock is down to 54 seconds, still running. They go back to the line of scrimmage to hurry up offense. No reason for a timeout here. 48 seconds left. 42 seconds left to go in the first half. Chargers still with two timeouts. Using a lot of time on this one. Time for Fox. He hadn't been close to West Chandler. Something is awry in that usually successful connection. Of course, part of it is the constant pressure that Dan Fouts has been under. You see him getting up off the turf. That time, Lawrence Taylor right in his face. That'll make any quarterback throw it a little quicker than he wants to and not be quite as accurate. LT's and Ombre has turned his life around as Ed Croak, the giant PR man, said when he had his car stolen this year was outside a bowling alley. Last year it might have been outside of some nightlife. He's the first one at the meetings, the first one on team buses. Back in form. Here's a swing pass. Buford McGee. Get out of bounds. Down. Buford McGee with the inside move takes it down to the 21-yard line, puts the Chargers in field goal possession. As again, they go into a line without. Fouts calls a timeout with 18 seconds to play. 16-yard gain on the play. McGee's done a lot for the Chargers. Yeah, but that was, mis that was definitely a mistake by Buford McGee. You catch the ball anywhere in the last two minutes, you're not fighting for inches. Inches don't do you any good in the last two minutes, especially with 20 seconds left on the clock. You get to the sideline. You save that last timeout for a field goal. I don't imagine Dan Fouts is very happy with that, nor was Ernie Zampezi, Earl, or Coriel. You try to get to the sideline. Feet don't mean a thing. Dan Fouts grew up in San Francisco. His father was the longtime broadcaster for the 49ers on radio, Bob Fouts. He was a ball boy when he was uh, 12 years old. Learned a little cubing from the old Broads. Yes, from the old Broads. Mr. John Brody himself. Coach Parcells now counseling his defense as early in the game it was the Giants offense that had the ball most of the time. Moved it up and down the field. Built up a 10-0 lead. Now Fouts has come back to bring the Chargers to 10-7 after he had virtually nothing in the first 15 minutes of the first quarter. His confidence seems to be picking up as the offense does. You were uh, just mentioning Bill Parcells got to be the only head coach in the NFL who calls defenses for his football team. Rather unique in that aspect. He was the defensive coordinator of the Giants. All down to replace Ray Perkins when he went to Alabama in 83. Wigan, Kevin Winslow, not done yet, and the big guy, Missouri, takes it down to the six-yard line. Clock running. Now they got no timeouts left. You see where that play by Buford McGee? Five Seven. seconds. Two seconds. Fox throws it out of bounds, and the clock is out. See, that Fox is furious. That's Buford McGee. By not going out of bounds, he cost the San Diego Chargers that timeout where they couldn't get the field goal off. There's a flag on the play. Too many men on the field. You can't run an extra extra play if you're the offense in the last two minutes of a half or a game. Illegal half procedure. The crime. Pass over. Buford McGee. On Buford his shoulders. Seems a little exercised also. It's for sure that Coach Coriel was. So the Chargers get a chance late in the first half but can't turn it into points and the Giants go to the locker room holding to a 10 to 7 lead. But McGee did a lot of good things in the first half. Number one picking up the blitz of Lawrence Taylor. He put his helmet right under Taylor's chin a number of times just as he was about to pounce on Dan Fouts. And they remember so vividly Lawrence Taylor nailing Fouts here the last time they played in 83 and Fouts was gone for some weeks after. The last 
pass attempt by Kellen Winslow over the middle, not designed to get to the sideline. All you're trying to do is get as much yardage up the middle as you can possibly muster and then get down, settle your offense. But, Don, the point, the biggest point is Buford McGee not saving that timeout by running out of bounds cost the Chargers a shot at a field goal to tie the game. The NFL 86 halftime activities will continue in a moment with the score, the Giants 10 and the Chargers 7. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. All America watched the exciting preview of Our House. Now, don't miss it at its regular time Sundays. Hey, this sounds pretty serious. Gus will be there, and so will the kids. And you are a kid. Wrong. Being a kid stops at 10 or 11. I'm 12. Is it too big a job for Gus? Not if you love him. Our House, tonight at 7, 6 Central and Mountain. The BMW 735i is one of those rare luxury sedans engineered by driving enthusiasts. While other luxury sedans announce to the world you've arrived, the new BMW 735i offers you the considerable advantage of arriving a bit sooner. For a test drive, contact your New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut BMW dealers. Believe me, I've seen it all, and this is the best I've ever seen. Let me tell you something. From entertainment to just taking care of you, they treat everybody like a king. Especially if you are one. Hey, this is a castle. You're the king of the castle. Trump's castle, the crown jewel of Atlantic City. Act of Burt Lancaster on Donahue tomorrow at 4. You know, we believe halftime is a time for quiet reflection. That's why we've summoned Frank DeFord. And Frank, you often hear a team's executives referred to as the club's brain trust, but sometimes that phrase doesn't fit, right? Not exactly, Bobby. And also, something I've never understood in sports is why we always call the office the front office. Why don't we say that Lee Iacocca is in the front office at Chrysler? He's just in the office, right? But sports executives always have to be in the front office. Well, maybe it's because most people in the front office just aren't smart enough to get a job in a real office office. For example, <laughs> the case of Herschel Walker. Never mind what Walker is doing for the Cowboys. I want to know why it's the Cowboys he's doing it for. Walker was a Heisman Trophy winner and a demonstrable all-pro in any league. There were no fluty factors either. He possesses every possible, possible physical attribute. Nice guy, too. Incredibly, though, 130 other players were chosen in the draft last year before Dallas named Walker. Now, how in the world do you account for that? It's simply inconceivable to me that constitutionally dull and rotten teams like, say, the Colts or the Falcons would draft off the computer round after round, picking backup tight ends and other replaceable spare parts when they had the chance, any chance at all, to land potentially the finest running back and the best drawing card of this era. Now, yes, I know that Walker was in the USFL at the time, but that league was already on shaky ground. And besides, only a cursory look at Walker's contract would have shown that he could be a free agent soon enough. Indeed, it would only have been a small gamble to pick him on the very first round. After that, well, on the fifth round, when Herschel was finally selected, of the 27 other guys picked, only 11, well less than half, even made the NFL. This year, the same numbskull general managers who passed five rounds on Walker let Al Davis of the Raiders steal Napoleon McCallum of the Naval Academy in the fourth round. And that lesson was already writ broad across the heavens for the Cowboys drafted Roger Staubach more than 20 years ago and then patiently waited for him to lead them to the Super Bowl. Red Auerbach got Bill Russell because a lot of NBA front offices couldn't wait a lousy half season for while he played in the Olympics. Eight NBA teams passed on Larry Bird just because he had another year of collegiate eligibility. And our back stole Danny Ainge another way. It's no secret why the same teams, like the Cowboys, like the Raiders and Celtics, keep on winning, even if they don't have the top draft picks. It's not a front they have in the front office. It's real brains and imagination in the office. One thought about that, Frank, and I agree with you, so many of these alleged Sharpies have missed golden opportunities through the years, but it seems that the teams that are inclined to make a gamble on a future possibility are teams that are already well-established. Uh, the Celtics are a good team, well, the Cowboys, they don't feel as if they need immediate help. And, and beyond that, I think perhaps even more so, is the continuity in 
the front office. Auerbach, Davis, Gil Brandt at the Cowboys, and so forth. These are the people who stay there year after year. Perhaps that's the most important thing in establishing a team, not the players, uh, but the continuity up front. Paul, who's the smartest guy you ever played for? Uh, oh, it has to go back in grade school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably the smartest guy for play. I, you know, I, is this taking away now, Frank? It must be that the, uh, the best player available doesn't work anymore because obviously Herschel Walker was the best player available, and he would have been available. Everybody knew that. They throw that away. The smartest guy I ever played for, Al Davis. You played for him when he was an assistant coach, right, with uh, right. the Chargers. Yeah, he, and also he had recruited me to college. At the Citadel. The reason I say that, because any coach that I play for that was smart enough to get me has to be the smartest coach that I ever played for. <laughs> yeah, you know, when people talk about the legend of Al Davis, one of the first things they cite, beat Pete Rozelle in court, coached Paul McGuire. We'll be back with more <laughs> of NFL 86 in a minute. <laughs> be a law. This is perversion, Your Honor, please. I want to know who is on trial here. I warn you. I warn you! If I can't get justice here, I will get a gun and I'll do it myself. That's enough. You're in contempt. Your Honor, she's threatening You think I won't? Now there is a law. L.A. Law. A two-hour movie preview, Monday. I want to look at the sleeves. Hello, girls. Oh, uh, I need another limousine. Where's the yellow pages? Uh, Mama, have you seen the yellow pages? Uh, Gina, where's the yellow pages? I don't know. One book is in more homes, helping people find more goods and services. The official directory of New York Telephone. The 9X Yellow Pages. It's always there when you need it. Rob, new comedy coming September 20th. Hello again, everybody. I'm Bob Costas at our NFL 86 studios in New York. In a moment, we'll check live with Ahmad Rashad at the Meadowlands. Now, in other games, the Raiders and Redskins have just gone to the third at RFK, tied at three. Chris Barr and Mark Mosley exchanging first quarter field goals. In the first half, Marcus Allen had 61 yards rushing. He's in pursuit of his 11th consecutive regular season game, over 100. In the game you're watching, the Giants with the 10-7 halftime lead. As you know, they're doing it with a banged-up wide receiver core. As we take a look at some of the highlights, you'll see Phil Simms along the sidelines on the telephone, perhaps calling for some healthy receivers, so they won't have to use third-string quarterback Jeff Hostetler in that role, as they did a bit in the first half. Look, this worked for Elway and the Broncos last week, but you got to catch the ball, Phil, so Tony Galbraith's pass falls incomplete. Sims is a little better when he does the throwing himself. He looks for Mark Bavaro. The tight end is becoming one of his favorite targets. 29 yards on the play, and it sets up a Joe Morris touchdown in the second quarter, and at that point, the Giants have a 10-0 lead as Morris goes over from a yard out. The Giant defense really put pressure on Dan Fouts, something they were unable to do against Danny White Monday night in Dallas. And when they didn't pressure him, well, then they racked up his receivers. Kellen Winslow sandwiched on that play. But eventually, when you blitz, you leave yourself exposed in some areas, and Dan Fouts will pick you apart. One-on-one -on -one coverage for Gary Anderson. It doesn't work. 29 yards for the touchdown. Pulls the Chargers to within three, and you saw what happened toward the end of the first half. No timeouts left, and the Chargers had to settle to come up empty at the six-yard line of the Giants as they were unable to stop the clock in time for a field goal. So 10-7 in favor of the Giants. Philadelphia at Soldier Field, yes, with a 3-0 lead at halftime. The grudge match between Ryan and Ditka. The 46th defense of Buddy Ryan's Eagles has intercepted Mike Tomzak twice in the first half. Walter Payton, by the way, went over 15,000 career rushing yards for the Bears during the first half at Soldier Field. Tom Zack, of course, is playing for the injured Jim McMahon, who has the bad shoulder, so it could be a big story brewing, but it's early. 3-0 Eagles at halftime. Dallas playing at Detroit. Sloppy play by the Lions has cost them. James Jones fumbled at his own five-yard line. He's the guy who had the big game, 170-plus yards rushing last week for the Lions, but he fumbles today at the five. Tony Dorsett scores on the next play for Dallas. Later, they fumble on a punt try. It sets up a Dallas field goal by Raphael Septien. Danny White has also hit Timmy Newsom for a score. 17-0, Dallas at the half. They lost to the Lions in Pontiac last year. Cincinnati and Buffalo, 21-9 in favor of the Bengals. That's at halftime as they try to avoid their fourth consecutive bad start. You recall the last three seasons, they have not started well. But they lead Jim Kelly and company 21-9 at halftime, largely because they've been able to establish a ground game led by the bruising Larry Kinnebrew. He just drags people on this 22-yard run. 
and then later in the same drive, he does the honors from 11 yards out, disregard the flag, it was against Buffalo, he bruises a few more people, and in he goes for the 11-yard touchdown. Boomer Esiason is one of the NFL's best, and what a core of wide receivers he has to throw to. Here's one of them, Eddie Brown, the second-year man out of Miami, the first of two first-half touchdown catches for him. This catch and run, and a nifty one it was, covers 35 yards, and eventually they build their lead to 21-9 on this 17-yard reception by Brown. Buffalo's offense consisting of a Scott Norwood field goal and a six-yard touchdown run by Rob Riddick, but they missed the point after. So the Bills, who have not won a road game since December of 1983, trail at Cincinnati 21-9. Houston and Cleveland, they go to the third at the Dome 7-3 in favor of Houston trying to win their second in a row for Jerry Glanville. Atlanta leads St. Louis 17-13. That game is at halftime in Atlanta. O.J. Anderson didn't make the trip for the Cardinals, has a pulled hamstring. We're told that's legitimate, and his absence is not related to his discontent of earlier this week when he asked to be traded after Sunday's opener. New Orleans goes to the third quarter in an apparent laugher against hapless Green Bay, and the Saints lead it 24-3 in the third at home, trying to win for the first time for Jim Mora. Now let's go out to the Meadowlands. Ahmad Rashad, your thoughts on the first half. All right, Bobby, I know you're sitting up there saying, yeah, it's going to be a big scoring explosion, huh? Well, it hasn't been yet, but I also said one of the key matchups would be Gary Anderson going against uh, 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 the strong safety of the New York Giants, Kenny Hill, and he got by him. Fouts found him a 29-yard touchdown. Although Eric Coriel has done nothing the first half, they're still only trailing in this game by three points. I have a feeling that the story here is not the New York Giant defense, but the New York Giant offense. Phil Sims has done very well in keeping the ball, and that's the way you beat the, the Chargers is don't let their offense get on the field. But by the way the first half ended, I have a feeling that the Chargers are getting ready to explode any minute. And one thing for sure, 10 points will not beat the San Diego Chargers. All right, Ahmad, thanks very much. And we're just going to work a switch here from the field at the Meadowlands right back to the booth. Second half set to begin. Let's go to Don Crickey and Bob Trumpy. We'll see you later in the day. Thank you, Bob. The bombs away offense of the Chargers. They get more nicknames for their offense. Air <laughs> Coriel and Star Wars. But so far, not much impact. You think they'll open up like Ahmad does? Well, I don't think, one, the San Diego Chargers offense has played very well in the first half. Two, I don't think they play very smart. Uh, one of the reasons they haven't played very well is that Giant linebackers have softened up some San Diego receivers, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they hit him in the head a few times, and it makes you think about going down, down there again. But two, we mentioned that this San Diego offense is a high-tech offense. It's a Star Wars offense. But at the end of the first half, very, very poor execution. It began with Buford McGee making a nice catch, but there's no reason to try to get one or two extra yards. You got about 30 seconds left there on the clock. Fouts finds him over the middle. Now he... That's not the catch we're looking for. That's earlier on, way earlier on. But what Buford McGee should have done was try to get to the sideline. He didn't. He turned the ball upfield. Now, once that mistake is made, now you try to make up for it. They call a timeout. And then, strangely, Dan Fouts and the San Diego Chargers offense go to the line of scrimmage, throw the ball directly down the field to Kellen Winslow. Here you see it. He's got no chance to get out of bounds now. Most coaches say you need about 12 seconds to get your kicking team on the field. The confusion was San Diego tried to get their field goal team on. The offense stayed out there. The ball is snapped with 15 guys on the field. No play into the half. Chargers trail by three. One of the big factors was turnovers. The Giants did not turn the ball over. The Chargers were, had a turnover turned quickly into a touchdown. They waffle little Lionel James. Well, San Diego starts the second half with a football. I don't know who the big yeller is in the locker room for the San Diego Fouts. Chargers. Well, then he's got to start yelling. He has not made very good choices in this first half, rather strangely. As you look at the numbers, totally dominated by the New York Giants. In time of possession, the turnovers even, in yards... Dan Fouts has been off and off a lot with several receivers. And Gary Anderson. Well, Chandler particularly. I know this. If you run wrong routes for Fouts, he will put you on the sideline. Chandler, Chandler has no catches. Joyner has no catches. James has no catches. And Gary Anderson has not carried the ball. Well, the Giants will kick it off. As Phil Sims loosens up his throwing arm, he won't be out there for a while, though. Chargers do come back to start the third quarter with the ball. They drop back Lionel James and Buford McGee. 10-7 the count at halftime, Giants. Bears leading, trailing the Philadelphia Eagles 3-0 into the third quarter at Soldier Field. Dallas putting away Detroit. Cowboys coming off a winless preseason. The last time they had a 
losing preseason. They went to the Super Bowl. And now Joe Cooper hits it well downfield. A spinner into the end zone, and Lionel James watches it bounce out. So the newly acquired kicker delivers for the Giants, and the Charger offense comes out to go from their 20. Trump report that Stacy Robinson is back out on the field. He banged up his shoulder. He's a deep threat for the Giants. Here are the Chargers' possessions. Nothing to speak of. Lots of missed opportunities there, especially at the end of the first half, Don. Dan Fox goes to Buford McGee. Finds a crack in the Giants' defense, and he's ahead for a 10-yard gain out to the 30. Don Masick, a veteran center for San Diego, a most important player because so much of the rush comes up the middle at Dan Fouts, and Masick is a cog and stopping that. Clappin and McKnight, the guards. Lachey and Kowalski are the tackles. They think Lachey is going to be one of the fine linemen in all pro football, a second-year tackle from Ohio State, number one a year ago. goes to Anderson his first run from scrimmage and he gets about six yards Chargers looking to protect Dan Fouts drafted another offensive lineman number one this year James Fitzsimmons from Southern California Fitzsimmons showed up at training camp weighing 314 pounds and Dan Fouts named him Fat Simmons or Fitzpatrick Fats Patrick he hasn't played a whole lot Kellen Winslow limping off on the San Diego offense has the ability to go in at halftime, come back with a completely new offense, try something else. They show a lot. Now they're coming from a full backfield formation, and Buford McGee finds some openings as the Charger coaches having time to get counsel from the coaches who've been in the press box running the ball at the Giants to open the third quarter. There are a lot of ways you try to get yardage against the New York Giants. I think most teams try to run at Lawrence Taylor, figuring he's more dangerous coming from behind. By that time, Buford McGee cuts up. Excellent job of picking up the first down for the San Diego Chargers. Getting the ball more than he usually does. Full house backfield now from the eye set. Here's Fouts dropping the board. They pick the blitz up. Swing pass and Anderson. Ah, see? Alligator on the ball. Absolutely. I would, too, with that guy coming up to hit him. In the first half, one of the things the defense can do is kind of leave an impression in the minds of the offensive player. A little jab step right. He sees LT out there. Oh, is he going to throw it to me? Oh, my God. Oh, I can smell his breath. Whoops. Don't give me that football. Thank you very much. It's too hot. He did the smart thing. Four-yard gain isn't worth as much as having Gary Anderson go out in that cart. And that's what happens when LT gets a clean look at you. So it's second down and 10 now for the Chargers at their 44-yard line. Dip pass up the middle, Holahan, the tight end, gets ahead on his first reception of the day for 10 yards and a San Diego first down. That's catching those linebackers coming, going to the hot area where they came from. I see they've almost completely changed offenses. This team in practice goes in a game situation. Substitutes come on the field when they're out in the normal practice situation in San Diego. They have one guy on the sideline who tells who comes in and who goes out. There's such a crowd. Coming in now and coming wide to the near side is Gary Anderson. First and ten Chargers. They trail third quarter, 10-7. And West Chandler had been totally out of sync all day. Chandler coming off his best year as a Charger. He's been to the Pro, Pro Bowl four times. They haven't been close yet. Kenny Hill that time in coverage. It looked like a zone on that side. Chandler stopped. Dan Fouts threw it like he was leading a running receiver. Another incompletion. Down the field, with the exception of the reception by Gary Anderson for a, Gary Anderson for a touchdown, Chargers have gotten little. Chandler, an all-pro receiver, has not caught a ball today for the Chargers. Second and ten. Gary James gets by Taylor. And Gary Anderson, rather, takes the ball down to the 42-yard line. LT had a shot at him but couldn't hold on as Anderson is down to the 42-yard line now, the Giants. Now Wes Chandler is limping, coming back to the huddle. And Tremaine Johnson comes in to take his place. There's Wes Chandler. 
Caught 67 last year for well over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns, but the Giant defense has shut him out today. He's been open a few times, but Fouts has been able to make the connection to Chandler. Third down and seven now for San Diego. Home run. Tremaine Johnson going for the ball, and it's intercepted by Mark Collins. Mark Collins, a rookie cornerback for the Giants, is tested, and he responds with an interception. So the Chargers are stopped, and the Giants take over, albeit on their seven-yard line. Actually, probably as good as a punt really for the San Diego Chargers. But I don't think Dan Fouts threw this ball with the intentions of having it intercepted as a receiver. They have a couple of rules, and one is if you can't catch it, make sure the guy on the other helmet can't either. Collins, an excellent man-to-man -man coverage player for the New York Giants. Stacy Robinson is now back in. Playing wide receiver for the Giants, taken up, it appeared, badly in the second quarter. Joe Morris. From the seven, he advances the ball out to about the 12-yard line of the Giants. Gain of five on the play. Knocked down on by Ty Ellert, the rookie linebacker and inside backer. Lee Williams, Chuck Ian, and Leslie O'Neill across the defensive front of the Chargers. Billy Ray Smith and Woodrow Lowe, the outside backers. Ty Ellert and Thomas Benson inside. have come on a lot of carries for Joe Morris. 17. Here he comes again. He's going to be very close. Looks like he does have the first down. Got six and a first down, so the Giants move it out, get four new downs. Uh, he's now rushed himself for as many yards as the San Diego defense allowed the Miami Dolphins to rush for last week. Ten twenty-five to play in the third quarter. Joe Morris, a lot of carries and taking a lot of hits. Run it 18 times for 47 yards. Sims gets time and he finds coming out of the backfield Lee Roots out and now there's a penalty marker down in the giant backfield. Holding against the Giants is the signal. Scheduling is not easy for the Giants after opening at Dallas last Monday night. They come in to play the Chargers. Holding number 67. First down. Then have to hook up with the Raiders in California. They got the left guard, Billy Ard. Ard and Chris Godfrey, the guards for the Giants. Brad Benson and Carl Nelson, the tackles. Bart Oates is the center. No question, San Diego is displaying an improved defense over recent years. Have it. Their offense today is playing like their defense of old. And F. Final scores of Charger games just always look like halftime of NBA games. Lee Rusan breaks it on a quick fat block. He's through the opening. Jeffrey Dale, one of the safeties, finally knocked him down. But after the assessment for the holding penalty against the Giants, that just got back some of the penalty yards. It'll be second and 14. Earl Wilson playing the nose. You can see the Chargers threatening the blitz. Kevin Wyatt right up there. They run a game. And when you run games up front, if you can pop a running back through there, generally it goes for quite a ways. 65 Bart Oates and Wilson say, how's the wife? How's the family? The other thing all right? Two wide receivers knock him out to the left. A lot of speed, young speed. Stacy Robinson and Solomon Miller for the Giants. Bavaro. Woo, nearly, nearly a pickup who had turned up the hands of Stacy Robinson. Don Bavaro was absolutely tackled by Jeffrey Dale, the strong safety. You're allowed a pop in that first five yards if you're a defensive back. Well, Dale just bear hugged Mark Bavaro. I think he was the primary receiver. Seems had to go off of him to someone else. Whoa. That's trying to close out the National League East. 
Phillies playing it like their playoff series, looking to sweep them three straight. Now Phil Sims on third down, almost 14. Sprint out for Sims. Open man. Looks like the rookie, Solomon Miller, takes the ball for the Giants out to the 37-yard line. First down and a long third. 21-yard gain. Half roll by Phil Sims. Solomon Nick Miller does an excellent job of coming back inside. And he does a 360 back outside. Sims hits him right on the numbers. Kevin Wyatt not even close in coverage. Big first down by the New York Giants. The Giants get out of a hole now. You'll recall this drive started after the interception by Mark Collins at the Giants 7. Now hitting the big third down play for 21 yards. They start with new downs at their 37. Morris. Looked like somebody had his face mask. I think Thomas Benson had his face mask and nobody threw the flag. Morris still down. Phil Sims was really infuriated. Ran up to the referee screaming something as Joe Morris getting up and that's good to see with 837 to play in the third quarter the guy won't miss a beat stand that, right in that was ugly somebody grabbed it pulled it right back over his head look at now Fred Wyatt Joe Morris must go out the referee stopped the clock because of an injury. When you do that, the player must go to the bench for at least a play. Phil Sims putting up some pretty good numbers. 13 to 26, 220, one interception. Joe Morris, as you see, out rushing the Chargers so far. On second and 12, Sims gets time, running out of it. Nice catch by Stacy Robinson as he's across midfield and out to the 47-yard line of San Diego. A 17-yard gain. Donald Brown, the rookie, in coverage, replacing Danny Walters. Look at that crossing pattern. All that traffic down there. And you can see Donald Brown just kind of gets caught up in the wash. Robinson, an excellent catch. Giants have made their fair share of big plays today. Robinson now has caught two for the Giants for 29 yards. Run their own seven. They've now driven out across midfield. Morris caught by the nose tackle Chuck Ian, who throws him back, and it'll be again second and long for New York. This guy's been a real bright spot for the Charger defense. He's a 12th round draft choice. Suddenly playing nose tackle like he was born and raised there. Whip in the center. Bart Oates. Joe Morris Trump has now run the ball 20 times for just 44 yards. Sims getting some big numbers throwing the ball as the Chargers have a lot of people up front at the line. Blitz, blitz by Billy Ray and down goes Phil Sims. Coming from the inside was Thomas Benson. Billy Ray Smith coming from the outside and Thomas Benson as they double up Billy Ray Smith. Got a clean shot at Phil Sims. So the former Oklahoma Sooner now records the fourth sack of the day for San Diego. Chargers have shown a great deal of this. This is a, something like the Chicago defense. Benson is totally untouched. Sometimes the defense can put too many people up there uh, than the offensive line can accommodate for. Seems had no choice. Just hang on to the ball, take the sack, try to come up with another big play. Still a 10-7 game Giants in the third quarter. Third and 24. Incomplete at the 48-yard line. Giant fans went an interference call, but the official right there says it was clean, and so the Giants now send Sean Landetta out to punt the ball. Kevin Wyatt in coverage, half roll by Phil Sims, which the Giants have used very effectively today. You can see 37, Dale comes on the blitz. Looked like that hand on the back of the receiver's waist might have been illegal. That can happen. Landetta on the low. The train starts out from his four. 
Working hard to get to the 13-yard line. So the Chargers have the long field to go after a 58-yard punt by Sean Landetta and a 10-yard return by Lionel James. Back to Fouts in the offense after this. Mercedes-Benz was building sports sedans before there was such a term as sports sedan. Experience pays. The Mercedes-Benz 190 class. The heart of a sports sedan. The soul of a Mercedes-Benz. The 190 class. Something more than a sports sedan. Nothing less than a Mercedes-Benz. Pete, going to town with us? Ah, go on ahead. I think you had a little trouble. Ah, oh, we can take care of it. A day off is something real special, but so's a good neighbor. Going into town with us, Pete? Boy, head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. For a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Head for Bush beer. For the mountains. We're Newmark and Lewis, and we're on our way to take Manhattan with four grand openings all at one time. This is the biggest sale in the history of Newmark and Lewis. Four great new Newmark and Lewis stores opening on the same day and all in Manhattan. Celebrate with us in any Newmark and Lewis, and you'll find the lowest prices the world has ever seen on TVs, audio, video, major appliances, and air conditioners. Come celebrate our greatest grand opening ever at Newmark and Lewis, where we always beat the competition. Today's game is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. By Ramada. Next time, get the all-star treatment from your hotel. Next time, Ramada. And by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy as Dan Fouts comes out to run the offense. He throws a lot, but with discretion, he has one of the lowest interception career interception rates in the NFL. Right now, he finds his team a long way from the giant end zone. Chargers trailing by three as they did at the half. It's 10 7 Giants. Tim Spencer's a big back, but not that big, as the whole giant defense got him. Giants have the ball. It's rolled a fumble. Leonard Marshall comes out with it. Very tough for an official to determine, in fact, that there's a fumble in amongst all those people. They're getting together here. They've already made the call now. They have the benefit of the replay official. But I don't know. We got a good angle. Spencer has the ball. Looks like Marshall got it before he was down on the ground. I think from that angle, Giants ball. So far, they've not asked Let's the replay see. official. The way to realize that is that the umpire has the hand mic to the replay official. They rule first Giant down. Ball. So another Charger turnover could be very expensive in a few moments as the Giants take over the ball inside the 15, right at the 15-yard line of San Diego. Phil Sims goes up on first down. He's going to Joe Morris. Free ball. Fumble. Billy Yard knocked it out of bounds, but he can't recover upfield. Correct. It'll go back to the spot of the fumble. Now, there's a San Diego Charger that I did not see the number of who made a big mistake. We should pick it up here. Some San Diego Charger wants the ball is loose right there. Now watch the next guy who touches it for San Diego. Number 30, Kevin Wyatt tries to pick it up. You fall on that ball. Take possession. You don't try to make yards. New rule in the NFL. Ball goes back to the spot of the fumble. Wait a minute. Wyatt had a hand now. I guess it was a free ball. Defense. The reason is it stayed in bounds. It did not go out of bounds. Joe Morris doesn't get there. Oh, 
play official could come into play here, but has not. He calls the replay to look at it. It's not called from the field. A referee cannot ask him for it. Replay official decides in the press box looking at a monitor if they're not, they'll look at the play again and possibly make a turn in the decision. Can't now, though. Another player's run, so that play stands. Right. It happens again, though, and there's been calls for a replay look in this game. Again, the Giants get close, but don't get in on second and goal from the one yard line. NBC Sports 10 minute ticker. All we've had is field goals at RFK in Washington. Chris Barr has put up two of them for the Raiders and they lead 6 3. Cleveland has now taken the lead over the Houston Oilers at the Astrodome. Giants right up close to the goal line. Joe Morris. He's not in. Third down, and so they'll send out the field goal unit in all probability if he didn't get there, and there's no touchdown signal. Morris with four straight carries. The last three for a yard, then nope, nothing and nothing. 56, Ty Allert is the man who stops him at the line of scrimmage, and it appears the Giants are going for it. Don Shula's always said nothing turns the tide of the game like a goal line stand. We'll see if the Chargers can hold up. Trailing 10 to 7. Morris. No signal. He didn't get there, and the Giants lose the ball. They lose it on down to San Diego. Morris on four cracks, got a yard, then nothing, nothing, and nothing. So San Diego's much maligned defense stands tall on that set, and the Chargers, after giving up the ball, now get it back. Eight long years of development have created the Mercedes-Benz 300E. It moves from 0 to 55 in a stunning 7.5 seconds. It moves performance sedan engineering into a new dimension. And it returns to 0 with computerized ABS anti-lock brakes. The 300E sedan. If your home was destroyed, would your insurance pay to completely rebuild it? Fact is, even with an inflation clause, your policy may not cover today's higher rebuilding costs. Leave it to the good hands, people. Allstate can make sure you're protected. With an Allstate home replacement cost guarantee, we'll pay to completely rebuild your home, no matter what the cost. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Ramada wants to know what makes John Madden mad. Try to get some special treatment in a hotel. You show them your gold card, your silver card, every precious metal card in the book, and they still treat you like a nobody. But don't get mad. Just get yourself a free Ramada business card. One little red card, get your preferred room rates, express check-in and check-out, and more. With treatment like that, why carry anything else? Yeah. Next time, Ramada. Call 1-800-2-RAMADA. An American tradition continues. 1975 brought one of the most memorable moments in World Series history. Carlton Fisk's game-winning homer sent Fenway Park into a frenzy. Next Saturday, the Red Sox road to the pennant travels through Toronto as they face the Blue Jays, plus regional action. The tradition is here. The memories are waiting. The Charger defense with a big moment, stopping Joe Morris on three straight downs for no gain, and they take over the ball at their goal line to the Chargers, and Fouts... Daring in, and he is. Fires downfield, and Chandler's first reception is good to the 20. It's a first down for San Diego. So Dan Fouts, daring do with a gun from the end zone, gets a 19-yard gain to West Chandler. John, that ball was not well thrown. I want to go back to that fumble by the New York Giants by Joe Morris. No player on the field can recover that fumble down the field farther. The officials should have marked that back where the fumble took place. They didn't. Chargers stopped it, so it kind of goes away, but that was an improper placement. Now Pops tries again. Out Cameron and Chandler all of a sudden finds cracks in the Giant defense. After he's been shut out for almost three quarters, he comes alive with consecutive receptions. That one good for 12 yards and another Charger first down. Charger fans are going to say, where's that been all day? Last week, 
Chandler had six catches for 78 yards. It takes him almost three quarters to catch his first one today. 2.50 to go in the third quarter. Giants lead as they did at the half, 10 to 7. They're going to go to Anderson before long. Buford McGee was an option quarterback in high school. Anderson was the trailer as he ran the option, but did not pitch back, and they don't get much on a first and 10 play. Giants defense that very, very well, though. They had Kerry Kennard on the pitch, man. Here's Lawrence Taylor. He's the option, man. You can see that Sam Clappen is right there in front. Carl Banks makes the tackle, and at the top of the screen, the weak safety, Terry Kennard, is covering the pitch, man. Jim Burt also on the play as Lawrence Taylor's now going out with the lame left arm. Second down and almost eight for the Chargers. Out, up from those feet. Long ball, Anderson's out there. The Giants intercept. Kenny Hill steps in front of Gary Anderson and the Giants get yet another San Diego turnover. Once again, a very poorly thrown ball by Dan Fouts. Now, his primary receiver appears to be Wes Chandler, who falls down. Now, you can see the coverage. Yeah, that's a hope shot. Dan Fouts normally doesn't make bad decisions like that. Fourth turnover taken back by the Giants. It's an automotive advance whose time has come. The Mercedes-Benz Supplemental Restraint System, SRS. In a severe frontal impact, a driver's side airbag and emergency tensioning retractors in both front seat belts supplement three-point seat belt restraint. All in a fraction of a second. SRS. Only from Mercedes-Benz. And now standard equipment on every Mercedes-Benz for 1986. Aha. There's a thief in this attic. This skimpy amount of insulation can rob you bland on your fuel bill. Oof. Fight back with the attic blanket from Owens Corning. It's the thickest, most powerful roll of pink insulation you can add. It can help you save money on your fuel bill. It is an open and shut case. Owens Corning. We put your house in the pink. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy back at Giant Stadium last week running a 70-play, 500-yard-plus offense against Miami. The Chargers didn't have a turnover today. They have given up four times to the Giants. And right now, the Giants are ready to go again from their 44, leading 10-7. to 7. The score stands as it did at the half. Late now in the third quarter, Navarro doubled up. Two linebackers converged on him. He's a hand fighter, Mark Navarro. What a difference a week makes for the San Diego Charger football team. And the fact that they have these are three possessions in the second half. And the fact that they're on a six-game losing streak on the road, two and six last year on the road. And bounces not look good today. Last time they played, the two teams, the Giants and the Chargers in 83 at this stadium, put up 75 points. Chargers won that day 41-34. Joe Morris breaks the crust and rockets ahead on a second down and 10 play. He is close to and apparently has a first down for the Giants. Nice little delay by the New York Giants. Allows the blocking pattern to set up for Joe Morris here. That's Bavaro. He's faking like it's a pass, and then he goes after Billy Ray Smith. Billy Ray does fight off the block, and he's there to make the tackle. Well, that's a good delay, a nice little deception by the Giant offense. down throw going for the distance Lionel Manuel is the intended receiver and Wayne Davis shows why he was a second round draft choice a year ago out of Indiana State acrobatic deflection 
Manuel's not big. He can get deep. Sim says the problem with the receivers, you, they tuck their number, half of it into their pants. They're so small. <laughs> Parcells now checking his offense. The play comes in. Bill Sims with 14 of 30 throws for 237 yards. Joe Mora caught and thrown back by Jeffrey Dale, a big tough safety from LSU. The ticker. Now the Bears have come alive in the third quarter and they've moved out in front of the Philadelphia Eagles 10 to 3. Dallas continues to dominate over the Lions at Pontiac, Michigan. Buffalo coming back at Cincinnati after trailing big early. And Cleveland has come from behind to take the lead over Houston. We're down to the final 45 seconds of the third quarter. Third and 12 for Phil Sims and the Giants. Good coverage by Kevin Wyatt against another rookie, Solomon Miller. Well, there's a lot of contact going on today between defensive backs and wide receivers. Bumping all the way up the sideline. That's great coverage. No flags thrown. Buford McGee drops back deep now for the Chargers as Landett is ready to punt again for the Giants. Lionel James is back deep. End over end punted. Little train. He's going to fair catch the ball at the 16 yard line. So a 33 yard punt, and the Chargers get it back, but again in a hole as they start out inside their 20. We'll be back to Giant Stadium after this. Today's Duracell battery. It lasts up to 30% longer than the ones we made just two years ago. Duracell. No battery lasts longer. Introducing McDonald's NFL Kickoff Payoff. Oh boy, a new game at McDonald's. I'm so excited. How do you play? Collect trading cards of all your favorite NFL stars. I got my card. I it. No. I got it. Each card's a winner. Win a McDonald's sandwich, fries, or Coca-Cola. New winners every week. But you got only one week to turn in your winning cards. So hustle. NFL Kickoff Payoff. Follow me. America rides Monroe, America rides Monroe, on the road, the way to go, America rides Monroe. More people ride Monroe shocks and struts than any other brand. And right now, get up to $20 in rebates. Get $2 back on each Monroe Matic Plus and $5 back on each Gas Magnum or Gas Matic. They'll give you the best ride ever, guaranteed. In North Carolina, Honda lawnmowers are assembled from the wheels up. Then the final critical step, the Clara Johnson test. If Clara pulls and it starts, it's a Honda. Skip it. How do you feel about spending the night with two handsome young men? I'd better remember to take my vitamins. Join Bob Hope and his guests when they lampoon the new TV scene Monday. Danny Walters, a very fine cornerback for the Chargers, went down in the first half with an Achilles tendon injury. On the sidelines, knowing that he can do little to help now as the San Diego offense trying to move the ball downfield. There have been three possessions total in the second half, and all three have resulted in turnovers. Bounce again, throws right into coverage as Teller Winslow, the tight end, was doubled up. Carson was on him, so was Reasons, the other inside linebacker. And Chargers were fortunate not to have turned over the ball a fourth, fifth time. You can see right where the ball is going. Colin Winslow, top left of the screen. Carson almost makes the interception, but Reasons is there in coverage, too. Twenty-two seconds to go in the third quarter. Bouts and the Chargers down to the Giants, 10-7. Winslow running an open field gets out to the 30. It's a San Diego first down. 
What was expected to be an offensive shootout has turned into a game where the defenses have stood tallest. Winslow has an outside release on Lawrence Taylor. You see the release. Whole hand comes inside. Winslow goes outside. Lawrence kind of loses him in coverage. And Fouts finds him for a 14-yard pickup and a first down by San Diego. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Meet the man who's going to defend NBC on Tuesday nights. Next to injustice, I hate losing. Matlock premieres Tuesday, September 23rd. Roads and bridges to travel over, carrying safely our most precious cargo. This is Governor Mario Cuomo. We're working to rebuild New York, restoring the roads and bridges that connect our cities and towns, making it safe for everyone. Under Governor Cuomo's plan for rebuilding New York, over 3,000 miles of highway and over 1,300 bridges have been rescued from danger and decay, making it safer for the members of the family of New York. Governor Mario Cuomo, rebuilding New York for the future. Nobody puts you in the middle of football action like the people at NFL Films, and nobody's hungrier to help aggressive growing companies like theirs than Midlantic. NFL Films teamed up with the Hungry Bankers right at the start. When their signals called for a major expansion, the Midlantic team provided the funding. And whatever financial play they run next, we'll help carry the ball. If you're playing to win, call the Hungry Bankers at Midlantic. We're pros. We've just made it easier to get into one of the world's most sophisticated car lines because now you can experience all the advanced styling, all the technical innovation, all the classic luxury, and now all the exceptional deals that Audi offers. So you won't have to spend the next five years saving up for a high-performance sedan when you could be driving one. See your local Audi Tri-State dealer today for exceptional deals on exceptional Audis. Actor Burt Lancaster on Donahue tomorrow at 4. QB comparison, Phil Sims. Very similar stats as far as completions and attempts, but the yardage is different the turnovers too, as it's now 14.56 showing on the fourth quarter clock. And Carl Banks comes up to stuff the run of Buford McGee of the Chargers. Biggest disparity, look at that time of possession. Last week, the Chargers had its 70 offensive plays to so just 39 for Miami. A total turnaround this week. You keep expecting the San Diego Charger offense to suddenly in one series get well. Shown no signs of getting better. Here's Fox on second and 11. Nice breakup. Well done by the Giants. Terry Kennard, the free safety, came up to knock it away from Holohan. Now we have a moment. Let's go to NFL 86. Bob? Don, the Bills have scored 17 unanswered points in the third at Cincinnati, capped by this, an 84-yard beauty from Jim Kelly to Chris Burkett. Suddenly, Buffalo 26, and the Bengals 21 in the third at Riverfront. Back to Don and Trump. Thank you, Bob. Jim Kelly making it happen in his second week as a starting quarterback for Buffalo. Fouts, who is the most productive passer of any active in the National Football League over the years. Trying to make it happen here, and here's a throw to Gary Anderson, who is a jet when he gets the ball, and he's ahead on a third and 11. First down, Chargers. Terry Kennard finally makes the tackle. Gary Anderson just out of the backfield. He's lined up as a wide receiver. You see the pick also run by the wide receiver. Gets the defense off of him. Look at that step up field. He is a big Tony Dorsett in that aspect of his game. That first step up field, he is gone. First time he ever touched the ball as a high school player, a sophomore in Missouri, he ran about 80 yards for a touchdown. He's been doing it ever since. Bouts on first down. Gets some time. He's not had a lot today, and a strike over the middle. Trumaine Johnson, a grambling receiver. There's been so many superior ones in the league. Makes a reception for a Charger first down to the Giant 43-yard line. Elvis Patterson waffled him, but Trumaine Johnson held on. Last year, he fell into disfavor with Dan Fouts. He caught 171 passes in two years in the U.S. Football League, but Fouts didn't feel he was in the place he should be on a lot of routes, so he sat down much of the season. This year, he's come in and is ready to play. You don't get much business if you're not in the right spot at the right time for Dan Fouts. He spreads the ball around. Everybody gets it. Here's a pitch back to Gary Anderson. First down, Terry doesn't get much. 
13 minutes to play in the game now, and the Giants lead as they did at the half, 10 to 7. Leonard Marshall with that tackle. Valuable on the field. The also Eagles tying up the Bears, Trump in the fourth quarter at Chicago. Leonard Marshall also valuable to the Giants off the field. Taught 16 fellow New York Giant football players back to school. They all attend on a part-time basis, Fairleigh Dickinson University. Dropping the throw is Dan Fouts on second and nine. Wes Chandler. Wes says, when I get it, I go boom, but not that time. He got boomed. Phillies continue to lead the Mets and delaying their clinching in the National League East with a 6-0 lead at Veterans Stadium now in the sixth inning. Once again, we remind our viewers that we'll be selecting the NBC Budweiser player of the game at the conclusion of the game. Actually, in fairness, Trump, it's George Martin who sent all those guys back to school. I apologize to you. Realizing there's a life after football, Harry Carson's getting his master's degree in business. Right now, Fouts is the business they have to attend to. Another standout defensive play, but a marker comes in. Two of them do from way off the play. Wes Chandler was the man who was the intended receiver. Looked like Perry Williams in coverage. That ball was thrown high, Don. Now, the ball is uncatchable. The interference is going to stand. 23. If the, the officials determine the ball is uncatchable. Generally, they wave off the interference. But West Channel was knocked down by Perry Williams. So the interference call stands. First down, San Diego. There's Lawrence Taylor. There's the contact. I think that's a good call. Here they go now. First down. Three ball, and Harry Carson almost had it. Kellen Winslow coming underneath the zone coverage by the linebackers who dropped deep was behind him, and Carson could have had it. One of the things people try to do against San Diego and Dan Fouts, as opposed to rushing outside, they try to pressure the pocket back in his face. There have been several tip balls at the line of scrimmage today by the New York Giants. Obviously, that idea is working. Every game's a big game for Coach Coriel, as you know, Trump. The Chargers have not had a winning record since 1982, and he's under the gun. Much as they love him in San Diego, and much as he's had great success over the years, and now the giant defense forces Dan Fouts to spend a timeout much sooner than he'd hoped to. 10-7 it stands as Fouts comes over for counsel at the sideline. A typical day with the station wagon. Except one thing's changed. The station wagon. The new Ford Taurus wagon. With the design and performance that make everyday driving more than an everyday experience. Now there's an American car that has exactly what we've been looking for. For us. For us. For us. Have you driven a Ford? Sometimes a simple river crossing isn't so simple. And when you've got him back, it's your turn. Push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. For a taste as smooth as its name. Push. Head for the fresh beer. Head for the mountain. If you want to risk driving on your old antifreeze another year, you ought to know what you might be getting yourself into. Driving just 10,000 miles on weak, neglected antifreeze can cause freeze-up and make a radiator look this bad, while a Presto radiator looks this good. So for maximum protection, don't push your luck. Change it once a year, every year, with fresh Presto. And don't you be left out in the cold. Brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Travelers, one of America's strongest, most experienced financial experts. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy as Dan Fouts on second and ten drops to throw. He's got a man. It's incomplete. It's intercepted by the Giants again. Kenny Hill picks it up. 
Outside the 20. Free ball again. Chargers seem to have it. Let's see. Hill got it back, yep. Don. So again, San Diego turns the ball over as they're driving in the giant defense, winning this game 10 to 7. Gets the ball back for the offense, and Coach Coriel looks for a glass of water or something stronger. Now, when it goes bad, it really goes bad. That not only went through the hands of one San Diego Charger receiver, it went through the hands of two. Watch what happens here. Joyner, Winslow, and Kenny Hill with the interception. Trump, that's the fourth possession in a row that San Diego's turned the ball over. Joe Morris cuts through and works his way nicely out to the Giants. 43-yard line. Thomas Benson, 57, got him, but the Giants now come up with second and short. So Sims gets a break on the play call. He's been second and long much of the day. He seems to have certainly weathered the lack of preseason very well. Looks in midseason form. Doesn't appear to be tired. Last week against Dallas, hands on hips. Really gasping for air today. Looks in great shape. Temperatures are factor. It's a perfect day. Temperature in the 60s. Our hit is Billy Ray Smith. Comes from the left outside linebacker 54 at that knee-high tackle. But it is a first down for the Giants as they advance the ball out to their 47-yard line. Game clock winding down, 10 minutes and 25 seconds to play in it. The Chargers were the highest scoring team in football in the fourth quarter last season. Nobody scored here in the third quarter. Still a 10-7 game as it was at the half. Penalty markers on first and 10. Offsides against the defense. Stops the clock with 10 minutes and 7 seconds to go. Here's Fred Wyatt. Outside, 91, first down. Got the rookie, Leslie O'Neill, jumping in. So Phil Sims has an interesting play call now. He has a first and five at the 49-yard line of San Diego. Notice Leslie O'Neill has that shield over his eyes on his face mask. Something that I would encourage all players to have. You can see it over his eyes to protect his eyes. Joe Morris beats the blitz. Joe Morris breaks inside the 35-yard line of San Diego. He's not out of bounds at the 31. 17 yards from scrimmage for the Giants' eighth back. Got his hand up looking for a break. Wants to take a breather. You'll see that Dale, 37, is the man in there that Tries to break up the play. Carthon with an excellent block. And then the foot speed of Joe Morris. Also a nice little block by Lionel Manuel. He's the hub of the giant running game. Joe Morris will be 26 years old tomorrow. Again, leading all rushers in this game. financing or up to one thousand dollars cash back direct from board if only things lasted longer if only their warranties lasted longer if only you would bought them with the american express card because from now until december 31st we will extend the free repair period of the manufacturer's warranty in fact we'll double it up to an extra year american express introduces buyer's assurance now, if something breaks, it won't break you. But only if you use the American Express card. Apply now. Today, millions of Americans are better off than ever before. Better off with expertise on how to manage cash, finance mortgages, and accumulate assets. Better off with the finest insurance protection for their lives, property, and businesses. They're better off under the umbrella of one of America's largest diversified financial enterprises, the Travelers. 
Have you looked under the traveler's umbrella lately? An American tradition continues. 1975 brought one of the most memorable moments in World Series history. Carlton Fisk's game-winning homer sent Fenway Park into a frenzy. Next Saturday, the Red Sox road to the pennon travels through Toronto as they face the Blue Jays, plus regional action. The tradition is here. The memories are waiting. Joe Morris was running on empty after that last 17-yard gain, his 30th run from scrimmage today. He's on the sideline as they go to Maurice Carson, and he finds room and gets down to the 25-yard line. Check the scoreboard as Joe Morris today has had 13 carries where he's gained no yards or minus yards. He total for the day has 13, 30 carries for 83 yards and a touchdown. Giant record for carries in a ball game held by Joe Morris versus Pittsburgh in 1985 36. So he can carry the load. Second down, the Giants need four. Carthon lost his footing, and then a marker comes in. Umpire threw it in. Behind the linebackers. Now let's go to Bob Costas at NFL 86. Bob. Okay, Don, in the fourth at RFK, Jay Schrader goes deep, and he'll find Clint Didier. 59 yards later, he's hauled down from behind by Mike Haynes, but it's first and goal. Redskins, George Rogers scores a moment later with six and a half minutes to play. They lead 10-6. Second down. Thank you, Bob. Joe Morris still on the sideline after running from scrimmage 17 yards. He just seemed to be... Worn out yep. after the 30th carry. Yep. Now after the penalty call against the Giants, the ball is set back to the San Diego 35-yard line. Solomon Miller, a rookie on the near flank. He can fly. Second and 14. Miller in motion. Sims dumps it over the middle. He's got a man coming out of Stacy Robinson, cutting across the field. He takes the ball to the 26-yard line and is finally cut down at the San Diego 23. Chargers came with an all-out blitz on single coverage. It was Donald Brown, the rookie. You can see everybody coming. Wyatt, and actually two players knock each other off the path to the quarterback. Good catch by Stacy Robinson, who remains on the turf. Remember, he hurt his back in the first half. And Donald Brown, who was covering on the play, is down on the play after the catch by Robinson. Good for a 12-yard gain on second and 14. Third and two, and we come back to Giant Stadium with the Giants holding to a three-point lead. Kleber, did you send those galoshes to Cleveland? They didn't get there. Yes, Mr. Reliable. They are express as per your instructions. Which company did you use? Why? Aren't they all the same? Hold it. If you'd used Federal Express, you wouldn't be having this problem. Come with me. You see, Federal Express isn't the same as everybody else because today it takes much more. For instance, we have computers in our vans. Oh! So our couriers know instantly when there's a pickup. I see! And at our stations, we track every package and can tell you its exact status within 30 minutes or your money back. Is that right? right. And we have the most advanced communication system in the business. I see! So we can give you the information you need quickly. This makes us more reliable. We see! Next time, send it Federal Express, because all Air Express companies are not the same. <laughs> reliable! I like that an Air Express company. Yes, Mr. Reliable. Ah. Take a close look at the car that was the world's best-selling car in 1982, in 1983, 1984, and 1985. You probably know what it is. It's Ford Escort. Ford Escort, world's best-selling car, four years running. Now, get 2.9 financing or up to $500 cash back direct from Ford. Presenting the NFL 86 team, Ahmad Rashad with interviews and features, Frank DeFord, commentary and essays, Paul McGuire with predictions and analysis, and our host, Bob Costas. NFL 86, it takes a colorful team to cover a colorful sport. Third and two Giants, they lead by three, fourth quarter. 8.18 to play in it. They're at the 23-yard line of the Chargers. 
safety blitz and Phil Hughes dumps it off. Running in open field is Tony Galbraith, and he is ahead for a first down inside the 15-yard line of San Diego. An 11-yard gain. They call the right play against the right defense, Don. That's what offensive coaches are looking for. They catch the Chargers in an all-out blitz. Sims does a good job. Galbert is the hot receiver. You see the, see the two safeties out there. Then Galbert has got a personal escort right out in front of him. Vincent does an excellent job of at least slowing him down. Chargers have mounted two goal line stands. The last they stopped the Giants on three knocks from the one. In the first half, they held the Giants with a first and goal from inside the 10 to just a field goal. Now let's see what Sims does. Into the end zone, tip ball and almost intercepted by Benson. Giants need to take it in with 7.22 to play. Field goal would give them a six-point lead. That was intended for Bavaro throughout the day. Comes from the right. No one's held Bavaro up. See, he's got a free release there. Almost room service. Yes, sir. Take those hands up though, so only get their helmet off. Now he has gloves on. Tough to catch. Second down and ten for the Giants. 12 yard line of San Diego. Too much on it. I tell you that Gil Bird has been coming all day on a safety blitz. I mean, he had even been disguising it, coming right up to the line and taking off. That time it didn't appear that the wide receivers read the blitz either. Sims just threw that one away. I don't think he had a receiver to go to. Charger defense has done a really a magnificent job, as has the Giant defense. Defensive game. It's a 10-7 game in the fourth quarter. Expected to be a shootout. It has not been that. Giant defense has taken the ball back on five turnovers by the Chargers. Touchdown, Giants. Lionel Manuel off the right flank, turned in on the second-year cornerback, Wayne Davis. And case closed on the drive. The Giants extend their lead to 16-7. Once again, the blitz. You see the free safety, 37, standing in the end zone. Sims looks him off. Excellent pattern run by Lionel Manuel. Just enough cushion for Sims to get the ball in there. Now Joe Cooper, the newcomer to place kick for the Giants. Spins it up and through as Phil Sims has passed for over 270 yards in this game. And the Giants open up a 17-7 lead. You'll recall they led 10-0 in the second quarter before the Chargers came back to trail at halftime, 10-7. Now it's the Giants by 10 again with 7-14 to play in the game. Be sure to join us one week for today for more exciting NFL action. We begin the day at 12.30 Eastern time with NFL 86. Then the Miami Dolphins, led by their fabulous quarterback Dan Marino, take on the strong defense of the Jets. Here at Giant Stadium, or the Denver Broncos will be at Philadelphia to take on Buddy Ryan's Eagles, who are doing very well against the Bears at the moment, tied at Chicago. Be sure to check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Your team plays here on NBC Sports. Don, while we have a minute, let me correct our question about that fumble that was recovered by Billy Ard a couple of series ago, several series ago by the New York Giants in the last two minutes of a half of the game or on fourth down only the guy who fumbles it can recover it but outside of those two situations fourth down or the last two minutes anyone can recover it downfield downfield so I certainly stand corrected as to when and where players can recover a fumble down the field as always as generally as always the officials right on Right now, the Chargers are going to get the ball back as Cooper spins a short kick downfield. Lionel James at his 13-yard line. Reverse. Takes it to Gary Anderson. Lionel James gets out across the 27-yard line. 15-yard return. 
Kepper Johnson, a rookie from Ohio State, made this play on special teams for the Giants. Check the scoreboard now. Washington up on the Raiders in a tight defensive game. Look at Philadelphia. I'd like to be there just to see the handshake or lack of handshake between Buddy Ryan and Mike Ditka after the game. A lot of the square off to midfield. Sam Clapp and a guard almost had the ball. Gary Reasons. You don't think he, he didn't think he could catch it, but he could. Yes, he could. Gary Anderson was the intended receiver. Gary Reasons in coverage. Ball bounced right off Gary Reasons' head. Dan Fouts is a quarterback who is very critical of himself. Uh, it's going to be a long flight back home for him. He has not played well. Well, this is the Chargers' fifth possession of the second half. The previous four in turnovers. Three interceptions and a fumble recovery. Fouts puts up a wobbler. Anderson's an acrobat, but nobody can catch that inbounds. Not even Manute Bowl. Anderson was open for a while, Don. Far side of the field. Lined up as a running back goes in motion. But Fouts was flushed. And then a Terry Kennard, the free safety, does exactly as you want a free safety to do, and that is be that center fielder for you. He picks up coverage. Once again, no choice for Dan Fouts. One of the big problems every quarterback has against the Giants is just seeing over the linebackers who are so huge on this Giant team. Third and ten, big down for Fouts. Luke Ball intercepted again. Fouts throws it to an interception. Picked up by the free safety, Terry Kennard. No communication. You had Charlie Joyner and Wes Chandler within three yards of each other, Don. That's, that's five possessions in a row now for San Diego in the second half that turns over the ball to the New York Giants. Now watch when he throws the ball out here. Two receivers within three yards of each other. There's Joyner. And there's Chandler. Dan Pops throwing four second half interceptions, and the Chargers also lost it on a fumble. So the Giants with a 10 point lead look to run the ball now and try to run the clock with 6.44 to play. And the Giants leading by 10. Hartbaum hits down to the 41 yard line. Jerry Kennard from Clemson, a number one draft choice when he came into the league. What a difference a week makes. Last week, San Diego Chargers offense played almost a perfect football game. No turnovers, 70 plays, 50 points. There's the QB Hosteller coming in. He's been playing wide receiver for four downs earlier. He's on the far flank. Giants 10 at that position because of injuries. To the 38 yard line. Second down and nine play. Got a hit for four. Jeffrey Dale got him, but the Giants now try the power game at San Diego's defense, looking to run it out or run it down as much as they can. Still a lot of time, 540 to play. Don, I notice Dan Fouts sitting on the sideline down here in front of us with the phone in his ear talking to Al Saunders upstairs. I can't imagine what they're talking about. There's nothing to say today. He hasn't seen the Giant defense in three years, and three years from now be too soon. Last time they played, they knocked him out for a number of weeks. Bill Sims looking deep. Open man. Stacy Robinson putting moves on. He's down to the nine-yard line. So the Giants start to hit the big plays in the fourth quarter. That one good for 29 yards. It'll be first down in goal, New York. And you can see Phil Sims celebrating. Giants have had a bunch of big plays today. Good pass protection by the Giant offensive line. Look at the time he has to wait for Robinson to run that pattern. 32 in coverage. Donald Brown, the rookie again. He replaced Danny Walters with that knee injury in the first quarter, and the Giants have taken advantage of him. Yes, sir. We celebrate, Bill Sims. And the Chargers en route to their seventh consecutive road loss. 
Allowing an unbelievable comeback now as the Giants have it first and goal and are leading by 10. Under four and a half to play as the handoff is to Carthon. Tough yards, and he gets to the seven. Leslie O'Neill was on the stop. Well, last week, everyone shook a finger at the Giant defense. Today, they certainly played well. Yeah. They're tough, as we pointed out earlier, Trump. They were the number two off, uh, number two defense, the Giants, in 1985 behind the Chicago Bears' unbelievable defense. Sims, 18 of 37, 300 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Second down and goal from the seven. Our hits, but Carthon fends off them and gets down to the three. Lee Williams and Gil Bird on the hits for San Diego, but the game clock continues to tick down. 3.25 to play. And now San Diego signaling for a timeout. Chargers have just one remaining. They're down 17-7, and the Giants are knocking again. Kind of strange if they take a timeout now, thinking that if they stop them and the offense gets the ball back, suddenly they're going to play like they did last week as opposed to the way they played all day today. Game of the week next Saturday on NBC Sports. Either the runaway Red Sox in the American League East versus the Blue Jays or the White Sox against the California Angels. Another team heading to the American League playoffs. There is Johnny Parker, the Giants strength coach. He's the guy that put Phil Sims on the all-out strength program that has had him taking every snap for the last two seasons after his earlier years in the NFL were marred by a series of injuries. It's one of his prized weightlifting pupils, Joe Morris, who despite his 190 pounds is the third strongest giant. They said... Who's he when Phil Sims was drafted seven years ago out of Moorhead State, but all the scouts knew who he was. Now one of the premier quarterbacks in the game, having passed for 300 yards today. Not happy with his performance Monday night against the Cowboys at Irving, Texas. But he's come back today, getting alive here in the fourth quarter, and the Giants are holding to a 17-7 lead and challenging again. Of course, Dan Fouts leads the world in 300-yard games. 47 career 300-yard games has not come close today. It's been all Phil Sims and the New York Giants. Sims now with third down and goal coming up. Ball inside the four-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. like now he held on and that brings up fourth down but a successful field goal here would put the Chargers in much deeper trouble they'd be down by 13 points with 315 to play Chargers take another timeout Chargers do an excellent job stay at the line of scrimmage Charger defense has been on the field much of the day has mounted two goal line stands once in the first half, Giants coming away with just a field goal when they had it first and goal inside the 10. Another time, they just stopped the Giants Cole on three tries from the one and took over the ball. It has been the high-power offensive Dan Fouts, though, that has come up empty today for San Diego as the Chargers have turned it over every possession in the second half. Now, it's hard to believe that there are an awful lot of veterans on this football team, although 10 of the 22 defensive players for the Chargers are new, that historically the Chargers have been such a Four team on the road. And that seventh straight road defeat, three minutes and 15 seconds away. Joe Cooper out to try his third field goal attempt. He's been good on one. One hit the crossbar. This is like an extra point, though, in the 20 yard line. Jeff Rutledge holds. He spins it up and good. So the Giants, after the score stood at 10 to 7, just as it was at the half throughout much of the second half, now explode for 
10 more points and they take a 20 to 7 lead over San Diego. Bill Parcells got to be happy with the performance of his team. The manner in which they lost to the Dallas Cowboys allowing three points in the end of the first half down there and the game winning drive. 72 yards 54 seconds six plays against Dallas. And this week everyone played well for the New York Giants. Be something if the Eagles could take the Bears to overtime at Chicago or even beat them before that. Buffalo continuing its upset possibility at Cincinnati. Cleveland now the three point lead at Houston. Look at him. He's cheering everybody on over there on that sideline. Good leader for the New York Giants. He is that, the leader of the offense, Phil Sims. A big day today after a slow start by both quarterbacks. Stop slow start has continued. Here comes Gary Anderson looking for a channel. He finds one. It's out to the 35-yard line, and now the Giant defense has it just like they like it. Ready to tee off and go after Fouts, who has to throw the ball with 3-0-1 to play and his team way down. They've only had it five times, and five times they've turned it over in the second half. First and 10 on the 35. Chargers at home to play the Redskins next week. Charlie Joyner gets the ball at the 45-yard line of the Giants. Kenny Hill makes the stop, a 21-yard gain with 2.50 to play in the clock running. Chargers go with their hurry-up offense. Giants now will be playing a prevent. Just keep receivers in front of you, so the Chargers should gain a lot of yards here. One hop. Those don't count. Wes Chandler got it on the short hop, and there's also a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion number 89. Chandler left early. Chargers led the NFL last year with an average of just over 400 yards a game offense and 27 points a game. Looked even stronger up to this point. Had a 600-yard offensive game against the Eagles in the preseason, and they buried Philadelphia. Proved it was for real on opening day when they routed Miami with a 500-plus yard offense. But today, the Giant defense has been better than the Charger offense. Not on that play, though, as Wes Chandler is down to the 26-yard line. 24-yard gain. Chargers running up to go in formation without a huddle. Trailing 20-7. to seven. Redskins just beat the Raiders 10 6. Lost ball by Faust, but he got it back. George Martin knocked him down. Redskins a 10 6 victor over the Los Angeles Raiders, who start out to the first 0 2 season of theirs in a long time. Washington heads to San Diego next Sunday to go against the Chargers. And the Giants hook up with the Raiders. Two minutes to go now in the game as Dan Fats comes over looking for that miracle play which hasn't been there yet. AT&T, the right choice. The Giants trail Dallas by a touchdown with 20 seconds remaining. It's fourth and 18 at the Dallas 24, needing a big defensive play should the Cowboys drop back into nickel passing coverage or should they try to pressure New York into a mistake? What would you do? Can other long-distance companies offer you all AT&T can? Take a closer look. Wrong number? I'll credit you for that call. We'll set up an 800 number so you can dial Rome directly. You can save by placing... Imagine long distance without all this. Only AT&T has such an extensive network of professionals who can answer questions and suggest ways you can save money. AT&T Long Distance. For over 100 years, when you reached out, we were there. And you can keep it that way. AT&T, the right choice. 
What did you decide? Dallas chooses to blitz Phil Simms and interception results securing victory as Dallas clinches its ninth NFC East title. The Cowboys made the right choice. Giant coach Bill Parcells said to his team of the writers and media are going to bury after the loss to Dallas, but it's a long season. They've come back very nicely today. A very impressive win. Hold the San Diego Chargers to just seven points. They may score here at the end of the game, but I mean, they're, they're points that mean absolutely nothing. Parcells is a guy who has a great deal of faith in his football players. Tries well, to he's a player's the coach. They like him, but he doesn't sweet talk anybody. No, he, he, he can put a foot on your chest. Yeah, there's no question about that. But his uh, statement after the Dallas game, he was embarrassed because the defense is his part of this football team. He personally drafts the linebackers, yep. calls the defenses. It's the lowest point out, output for the San Diego Chargers, according to NBC statistician Ross Schneiderman, in 14 games. Outs, throws, look at there is man open. It's intercepted by Terry Kennard. Giant defense catching more of Fouts balls than his receivers. Ball was intended for Winslow. That's six. That's six drives in the second half, all with turnovers. Is he happy? <laughs> Jim Burt, who says you got to be crazy to play nose tackle, hugging Parcells. Parcells says that Burt is a couple of quarts low. Yeah, watch out for the uh, water win, yeah. jug over there. <laughs> That's right. Whenever the Giants win, Burt seems to get a handle on that water jug, and it's it's not too bad when it's 65 degrees. But in the playoff game, it's tough. Yeah. Usually pours it all over Bill Parcells. It's become a giant tradition. The water bucket dumped on the coach by Jim Burt as we're down now to 129 and the clock's running. San Diego is done for this day after the great opening game against Miami. You can also see all the players and coaches clearing away from Bill Parcells because they expect <laughs> Burt to grab the bucket and hit Parcells with it. Your basic run out the clock offense but that's no sure thing here at Giant Stadium they once lost a game to the Eagles trying to do this in 78 the Budweiser most valuable player for this day is Phil Sims of the Giants Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of Phil Sims today's MVP Bill Sims throwing for over 300 yards to lead the giant offense. Their defense also outstanding. From they just got point. him. Yep. Burke just got Parcells. Right. 50 points a week ago against Miami. The San Diego output drops to seven. And out. This one's history. Not what Coach Coriel was looking for. So the Giants are right back on track. As Coach <laughs> Parcells gets his shower early, Dan Fouts out to shake hands with another pro bowler, Lawrence Taylor. Coach Fouts, and he's really a coach on the field, will be back next week. Bill Parcells had a big one. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Exacting standards that say nothing is complete until it's right. One beer is brewed with these same values. Budweiser. The most expensive ingredients. Exclusive beechwood aging for a clean, crisp taste. Because this Bud's for you. Have you driven a Ford? Now. Get 2.9% financing or cash back on the purchase of most new Ford cars and trucks. Up to $600 cash back on Ford Ranger. $1,000 cash back on Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. And up to $600 on Tempos. 2.9% or cash back on other Ford cars and trucks, too. That's 2.9% financing or cash back. See your Ford dealer today.
Final score, Giants win it 20-7 to 7 for Bob Trumpy. This is Don Crickey, and now let's go to the Budweiser. The promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines, serving 13 cities in Asia and the Pacific. United, a fresh breeze across the Pacific. Coming Thursday on NBC, one of the most controversial television shows of the new season, Crime Stories. Nobody beats the wind. Come to the grand opening of the Wiz in Car Place, Long Island. Free t-shirts, frisbees, baseball caps, and coffee mugs. Be there. Times have changed. When I was a child, the world was simpler and safer. Drugs weren't a problem. But today, drugs are everywhere, and that scares me. It worries Senator Aldamato, too. His program to cut off aid to drug-producing countries and to jail drug dealers is essential. Thanks to Senator D'Amato, drug pushers, especially those who sell crack to children near our schools, will receive stiff, mandatory sentences. I'm supporting Senator D'Amato because I know he cares about our children's future. Only an Audi is pure Audi. And now it's even easier to experience all the technical innovations, classic design, luxury, and performance an Audi has to offer. For a limited time, your local Audi dealer has a great incentive to make you an exceptional deal on any 1986 Audi. See your Audi dealer soon. Because while attractive deals on interest rates are nice, an attractive deal on an Audi is even nicer. Live at 5 Monday, Miss America and Rip Taylor. Those of you who watched the Giants beat San Diego 20-7 saw this play. Phil Sims to Lionel Manuel for the touchdown, and that might have been the one that wrapped it up. The Giant defense did the rest. Seven turnovers on the day for the Chargers. This is the Budweiser NFL Report, brought to you by Budweiser. Each would age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Hello again, everybody. Bob Costas with Paul McGuire at our studios in New York. And if time permits, we'll check with Ahmad Rashad live with post-game comments from the Meadowlands. Let's continue with highlights of other games around the league. Buffalo and Cincinnati still 33-26. Yes, it is. They are late in the fourth. At one time, Cincinnati was in control, 21-9. But then Jim Kelly led a Buffalo comeback. And the Bills lead it right now, 33-26. It didn't look good for Kelly and company early. The Bengal ground game, led by bruising Larry Kinnebrew, was getting the job done. This 11-yard touchdown in the first made it 7-0 Cincy. However, here comes Kelly back. This is in the third quarter, and he'll hit Jerry Butler, the fine veteran receiver. Look at that tumbling catch, and it's set up a touchdown by Greg Bell a few plays later. Still in the third quarter, Chris Burkett will latch on to this one. 84 yards from Kelly. You know, they were playing that possession pass game early with Kelly, but as soon as they opened it up and let him go deep, the results were outstanding. 33-26, Kelly and the Bills in front, and trying to check on how much time is remaining. Just tell me. Cincinnati's on its way in. To maybe to score. They're at the one-yard line, and, they're, and there's still time to play in a ball game. All right, so Cincinnati threatening for what could be the tying touchdown. Elsewhere, Cleveland and Houston, and in that ball game, Cleveland has the lead 23-13. to They're in the fourth quarter. We've got some highlights from that one. Let's take a look. Kevin Mack, Natty Attire, uniform top, regular slacks. You can tell he didn't play today. One of the outstanding rushers for the Browns. And so, it was necessary for Kozar to go to the air more often. Ozzie Newsom makes the catch. He's caught a pass in 100 straight games. Ernest Biner stopped for a one-yard loss. Houston did a good job of controlling the Browns' ground game, which was, as we said, without Kevin Mack. Kozar will hit Reggie Langhorn with this 55-yarder in the fourth quarter. At that point, it gave the Browns a 16-13 lead, a lead they have now extended to 23-13. And Houston has just scored a touchdown in that game, bringing them to within 23-20. They are late in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati just scored against Buffalo. So they have pulled to within 33-32, pending the extra point. If they hit it, they could be headed for overtime in Cincinnati. Atlanta and St. Louis, a final. Atlanta wallops the Cardinals 33-13. William Andrews had a touchdown in that game. He's back for the Falcons. And New Orleans had a 24-3 halftime lead against Green Bay, and they coasted for the win. 24-10 is the final at the Superdome. We'll continue. I gotta get to Tilden. Tilden Car Care Centers have been making car...